Well, the city of Statesboro is counting its blessings. College football is back today, and Hurricane Dorian made minimal impact here, but it's also nervous. The storm forced a mandatory evacuation of the Savannah area, and Georgia Southern is going to need all the help it can get against one of the best teams in the FCS, the number six Maine Black Bears. We have the potential for a close one today. You're watching Sunbelt Football on ESPN+. Well, whether you're watching in Maine or Atlanta because of the hurricane evacuation, it's great to have you with us either way. With Danny Waugh, I'm Greg Talbot, and Amy Zimmer joins us from the sidelines in just a few minutes. Well, Danny, a lot of Georgia Southern fans nervous about this game. People are saying it screams potential upset because of what happened two years ago. That's right. 2017, the Eagles opened up the regular season at Auburn and they returned home to face New Hampshire in an FCS matchup. However, a hurricane came through and that game got pushed to Birmingham, Alabama. So the Eagles had to play at a neutral site and ended up losing that game 22 to 12. Let's take a look at our players to watch and we're talking quarterbacks for the main Black Bears. Chris Ferguson was out of his mind last week in that opener against Sacred Heart. He's got complete command of that offense. Yeah, he's almost in midseason form. He brings back a couple of returning wide receivers from last year, led the CAA in passing touchdowns. He's looking for a repeat performance. Yeah, as for Georgia Southern, though, we are not quite sure. Shywerts went down twice in Baton Rouge last weekend in the season opener at LSU. He was on the sideline in the second half wearing a sling over his throwing arm. Coach is calling him today a game-time decision. That's right. And throughout the week, Greg, he was day-to-day. -day. He participated minimally in practices over the last couple of days so it'll be interesting to see if shots gonna go out there on the field against Maine a lot of people think this has the potential to be a close game in the second half but we will see first home game of the year for Southern next on ESPN plus Well, would you look at this, despite the hurricane earlier in the week, a much bigger crowd than some folks expected here at Paulson Stadium for the home opener for Georgia Southern. For more on that, let's go down to the sidelines to Amy Zimmer. Danny, Greg, this is a great turnout despite just having a hurricane. Earlier this week, Georgia was under a state of emergency. Mandatory evacuations were in place for multiple counties, and all three of Georgia Southern's campuses were closed. Now, luckily, the hurricane did not hit as expected, and Georgia Southern was prepared to host their home opener this Saturday, no matter what. I talked with head coach Chad Lunsford earlier this week, and he told me he gets it if Eagle Nation can can't show out on Saturday. Ultimately, safety is the number one priority, and he's happy to see anyone come out if they can't. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Amy. Once again, that is our new sideline reporter for the season, Amy Zimmer. All right, Danny, Georgia Southern got thumped at LSU over the weekend in Baton Rouge, but Great crowd on hand nonetheless. Yeah, I don't think they were expecting to have them. such a big crowd here in the season opener, but it's a home opener, and, you know, the hurricane came and went, and everyone's back and ready for us from Georgia Southern football, Greg. So Ernest Edwards and Joe Fitzpatrick back to receive for Maine as Tyler Bass gets ready to send this one away for the home opener at Georgia Southern. Edwards will let that one bounce, take it from the 25-yard line, and... Let's take a look at this main offense for the first time today. Danny, when people talk about the main Black Bears, the number six ranked team in the FCS right now, a lot of people consider their defense to be their calling card. This is an awfully good offense. Yeah, very good offense. Chris Ferguson uh, coming back after last season, leading the CAA in touchdowns through 22 touchdowns last season for the Black Bears and had a great game last week in their opener against Sacred Heart. Over 400 yards passing, and that was all in the first half. So we'll see what Ferguson can do here in the first half against the Eagles. All right, on the first play, Ferguson rolling out on play action, dumps one off underneath to Jaquan Blair for a short gain, if any, on the play. That'll bring up second down and long. And like you said, Danny, Chris Ferguson, 400 yards in the first half last week, put everybody on red alert. The big question today is, can he manage to beat the Georgia Southern secondary? Because not many quarterbacks have over the last calendar year. Yeah, and Georgia Southern secondary is so good. Both quarterbacks coming back in Monclavian Brinson and Kendall Vildor. Vildor was the preseason Sunbelt Conference Defensive Player of the Year as well. 
Gain of a yard on the play. Ferguson under center for second down and nine. Man in motion, they sweep it to Devin Young, one of their four fast wide receivers. He's able to pick up maybe a yard on the play and Reynard Ellis in on the tackle from the middle linebacker spot. Reynard Ellis with eight tackles last week in the loss against LSU. A great tackle there, making a third down. Two pretty good plays by the uh, up front seven for Georgia Southern, Danny. Yeah, and that was one thing that was going to be interesting to see how this 3-4 defense was going to go about this main offense here tonight. All right, here comes Maine on third down and long for the first time today. Four for ten last week against Sacred Heart on third down in their season opener. And only one safety back for Southern on defense. Ferguson, not much time, dumps it off, complete pass, and it looks like a first down for Jaquan Blair. Southern is saying he did not haul it in, but it looks like they're going to give him the first down. Yeah, the ball didn't come out until after he went down. So it will be a first down for Maine. Let's take a look at Maine's impact players. Four really good receivers, but Ernest Edwards right there is first among equals. Yeah, Edwards having a great year last season. 53 catches, 839 yards, 10 touchdowns. Had 84 reception yards and three receptions and a touchdown last week against Sacred Heart. Southern showing blitz from the outside. Play action once again. Ferguson goes back the other way. Nearly intercepted as he went for Edwards. That one tipped away for the first time this year by Kendall Vildor. Well, when we spoke to defensive coordinator Scott Sloan for Georgia Southern, he said that the cornerbacks aren't going to have a specific duty on who they're going to guard. They're going to guard everyone. And Vildor, great coverage right there. Almost had the interception, but Edwards knocking it out of his hands the last second. Yeah, Kendall last year, second team All-American according to Pro Football Focus. Everywhere else, first team All-Conference. All right, second down and 10 for Ferguson in Maine. First time today, they go to their running back, Emmanuel Reed. Gets to the second line before he's pushed back, a gain of about five yards on the play. Emmanuel Reed, one of the big time transfers Maine has picked up. He came over from Buffalo where he was a limited contributor there, but last week, Danny, led the team in rushing, his, uh, rushing yards and two touchdowns. So it looks like he's coming in as their number one running back. Yeah, in his 29 games at Buffalo, he rushed over 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns there. On second down, Ferguson hits Andre Miller for the first time today, gets to midfield, a little bit across, and picks up the first down, gain of six or seven yards. Once again, another third down converted from Maine here in his opening drive. Ferguson trying to go with those quick passes, four or five yards up the field before going for the deep ball. Now Ferguson showing high efficiency already entering this season. Chris is a number nine all-time at Maine in passing yards. Couple interesting formations on their opening drive for the Black Bears as Miller moves. On the new first down, play action again, over the middle again to Miller again. And he's got a first down again, Danny. Once again, another short pass up the middle. Look at Nick Carl Charlton in his first year as the head coach for Maine, was the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach last year. And a fast riser, 31 years old. You're seeing that more and more in college football where younger coaches are getting an opportunity. And didn't have very long to go. He was a graduate assistant at Boston College, ended up on the main staff a couple years, promoted to OC. One year after that, promoted to the big job. First down again, Ferguson looking downfield. Once again, it's a nice little middle pass. That one is hauled in by Ori Jean Charles, the tight end sophomore. Another one of their transfers, Danny, he came over from Louisville. Yeah, once again, another another quick pass, a drag route out the, up the middle. They look at a couple of yards. So as you can see, we told you that Maine's got a lot of great wide receivers. Devin Young, Andre Miller, Jaquan Blair, Charles at tight end. Ernest Edwards, by the way, their best hasn't even made a catch yet. And here's second and seven. Up the middle to Reed. And the Buffalo transfer goes back up the middle, gets to the 25, and another first down. We told you folks at home, their defense is their calling card, but their offense is good. They are moving down the field easy on their first drive. Well, going back to Nick Charlton in his first year as a head coach, last season as the offensive coordinator, Maine went 10-4, went all the way to the FCS semifinals. 
Sure did. And after they thumped Sacred Heart last week in their season opener, moved up to number six in the FCS rankings this year, a lot of people think they might climb higher than that. Ferguson trying to escape. And down he goes for a sack. And on the tackle that time, Dylan Springer. And the offensive line for Maine did a good job here blocking, but as Ferguson went outside the pocket, tried to break one tackle, and then Springer coming in and knocking down. Randy Wade Jr. on the assist that time. In a spot like this, you'd be worried about throwing into the red zone, into the air, but not if you're this main offense. This is what they thrive on. Ferguson looking downfield again. He's got a man open over the middle for a gain of a couple. And that one is hauled in by Ernest Edwards, all-conference receiver and kick returner, Danny. He is their number one wide receiver. Yes. 2018 was second team all-CAA, preseason all-CAA, first team, also first team as a kick returner like you were talking about, Greg. Yeah, Ernest Edwards is a monster. Led the team last year in catches, receiving yards, and touchdowns. Third and long. They've converted every third down on this drive. Ferguson for the end zone. Off the hands of Blair, although he was open, but here comes a flag. And Southern's got to be happy, Danny. He had his hands on that one. Yeah, it was only a matter of time before Ferguson was going to go deep. You saw a quick pass, quick pass, play and play again. And we'll see what the... The flag is going to be on here in a moment. There are two fouls on the play, both by defense. Personal foul, dropping the passer. Defense number 96. That penalty is declined. Pass interference. Defense number 31. Automatic first down. So roughing the passer and pass interference, you'll be able to see both. This is Ty Phillips who got called for that and then P.I. downfield. That's going to put Mayan just outside the Georgia Southern 10-yard line. And this is not good news considering what happened last week if you're a Southern fan. Main six touchdowns on seven red zone trips last week, Danny. It's going to be interesting to see how the defense tried to stop Main here. Ferguson to throw, went back over the middle for Blair. That one a little bit long. You got to keep in mind as well, Georgia Southern was beat by the passing game last week at LSU. They, they gave sure up 472 were. total yards, 350 in the air, and, and five passing touchdowns as well. And despite that, when we talked to defensive coordinator Scott Sloan earlier this week, he knows that the lineup front got beat, but he was still pretty proud of their prize corners in Brinson and Vildor. Rightfully so. There's only about one play where Brinson got beat in that LSU matchup. Second and ten, got to get down to the one. Devin Young, the man in motion. This is a give to Reed. He's taken down around the line of scrimmage by Raymond Johnson. Third and long coming up. And Raymond Johnson continuing to get better and better. The junior from Sumter, South Carolina. He was a first-team preseason All-Sun Belt Conference member. Great tackle there. Third downs have been awfully easy to come by for Maine so far in this opening drive. And Danny, they have eaten a lot of clock already down to almost eight minutes in the first quarter. This is going to be big for Chris Ferguson. A tone-setting third down on the opening drive. Low snap pressure from the outsides. That one falls incomplete, intended for Michael Monios, their big freshman tight end. And that'll bring up a big fourth down for Maine, and it looks like they'll bring out their kicker. That's a big time stop for Georgia Southern there on defense. And every pass that Ferguson has thrown in this opening drive has been for only a couple of yards. He's six for nine, 38 yards here in the first drive. All right, out to kick this one in for Maine is Kenny Doak. He would give the Black Bears the lead on the opening drive of this one.
Southern nearly got a hand on that one, but it flies in toward the left goal post. Really impressive opening drive for the main Black Bears on offense. We'll see how Georgia Southern responds in their home opener next on ESPN+. Plus. All right, the main Black Bears drive most of the way down the field into the Georgia Southern red zone and kick it through to take a 3-0 lead. But, Danny, that's not Shy Wirtz on the sideline where the quarterback should be standing for Georgia Southern. No, that's the red shirt freshman Justin Tomlin set to make his first ever career start here at Georgia Southern. He came in throughout a, a good bit of the second half last week against LSU when Shy Wirtz went down. Shy went down a first time. He came back in a few plays later, then went back out again, and Justin Tomlin took over for the rest of that game. And we saw leading into this game, Justin Tomlin was taking first-team snaps, and after those warm-ups, Shy Wirtz went over and put on shorts instead of game pants, so... Justin Tomlin is going to be the guy tonight for Georgia Southern. And down inside the five, here comes Monquavian Brinson to return it, and he gets hammered at the 15. Well, you got to keep in mind the Eagles are without one of their best all-around athletes in Wesley Kennedy, missing the next couple of games. All right, so it is not going to be shy words he is not ready to go today after he got banged up at lsu it's justin tomlin good news is danny like you said he played pretty well at lsu completed three passes against a great tiger defense yeah, three of eight for 24 yards four rushes for four yards and we talked we talked to chad lunsford earlier in the week and they said to tomlin if he got the start which he does he doesn't have to try and make every play he just needs to manage the game First play of the offensive home season for Southern is a dive up the middle to Logan Wright. Maybe a yard or two. So there is Justin Tomlin. And when we talked to Chad this week, he said if Shy's not ready to go, Justin's going to be the guy. They do not anticipate him splitting time with third stringer Jalen Frazier. No, Bob the best, the offensive coordinator, said if Tomlin goes, he is our guy. And you wonder what Tomlin must be thinking with his first career start here in Statesboro. So the guy, he is on second and long. Tomlin will run the option and pitch it outside to right. Second consecutive play, they get it to him. He's up past the 20, bringing up a manageable third down. And if you're a new viewer of Georgia Southern, let's introduce you to this big running back room. Logan Wright is the thunder in the thunder and lightning backfield. Yeah, last season, 47 rushes, 308 yards, three touchdowns. He had 47 yards against LSU. And this is going to be interesting for the running back core for Georgia Southern because you have a lot of guys who pretty much watched the seniors in Wesley Fields and Monteo Garrett take a majority of the carries last season. Yeah, Logan is the biggest, most physical running back they have, and Coach Lunsford actually said that he had the best fall in spring camp of any of the running backs. And they'll pitch it to Caleb Hood, new addition to the team. But he's not going to pick up the fourth down as he bounced to the outside. That ball might have been loose as well. It was. Heads up play that time by Logan Wright to fall on it, but they're not going to pick it up. Well, Caleb Hood, a, a true freshman out there for Georgia Southern. Look at the impact players. Logan Wright coming up with the recovery. And you see J.D. King, a new addition to Georgia Southern, a transfer from Oklahoma State who was recently eligible just a few weeks ago. And when we talked about these offensive impact players with Bob DeBest, the offensive coordinator this week, he said if Southern's going to win today, it is all on the running backs and the offensive line, especially with Shine Up playing. That kick is away. Back to the 35. Down to the 30. Fair catch hauled in by Andre Miller. Fair catch made by Andre Miller from Maine. It'll be first down, two yards to go for the Black Bears at the 30-yard line. All right, they'll take a quick break. We'll take it with them on ESPN+. Plus. Maine up 3 nothing and then trying to extend. All right, Maine, a 3 nothing lead on Georgia Southern here on ESPN+. Plus. And, Danny, they have not, they've never won a game here in Paulson Stadium. It is the fourth time they've made their way down to Statesboro, Georgia, but it's the first time that these two teams have not met in the FCS playoffs. Every other matchup was in the playoffs last in 2011 where the Eagles got the win. All right, Maine begins their second drive by picking up a gain of about four yards on the ground. 
That is the second running back we've seen out of the Black Bears. That is their redshirt senior, Joe Fitzpatrick, a senior late in running back room they have. So they have two good options to go back and forth with. They also have a third running back in Elijah Brooks, the junior, who we haven't seen yet. They sure do. So four or five really good wide receivers, a tight end who catches passes, three running backs, plenty of options for the redshirt junior quarterback, Chris Ferguson. Second and five, swings it out to Devin Young, but the defense there to take him down and stop him short. Tackle in there for Monquavian Brinson, second on the team last year in tackles. And Brinson also another preseason first team all Sun Belt Conference selection. Able to read that wide receiver screen to make the tackle. Well, Main was phenomenal on their first drive on third downs as Ferguson falls down. Can't believe they picked that up, and that should bring up fourth down and short on the botched play that time as Fitzpatrick fell forward. And Ferguson will trot off the field. They'll give that one up after going three and out. As Georgia Southern sends J.D. King back to return this punt. You know, it's interesting, Danny. Earlier in this week, Southern listed Jesse Liptrot and Monquavian Brinson as the kick returners, you have to imagine D.D. King must have done something in practice this week to prove a point. And not to mention what he's done his previous two years at Oklahoma State. Here he goes from the 22. Gets pummeled a couple times for a gain of two or three yards on the play. But briefly, while we have him, J.D. King is going to be a big-time player for Georgia Southern. We'll learn a little bit more about him on the other side of the break on ESPN+. Plus. So you know by now that Shy Wirtz is not playing for Georgia Southern, but also two other guys out, Danny, that they could really use. Yeah, Wesley Kennedy, an all-around athlete for Georgia Southern, going to miss this game and the next two games. McGill Bowler, the punter, will be back next week. But Anthony Beck, the second, done a good job kicking the ball so far, especially last week when he had nine punts for 396 yards. Yeah, Southern starts their second drive with a handoff to Matt LaRoche that goes nowhere. And if Logan Wright is the thunder, then Matt LaRoche is the lightning. Yeah, Matt LaRoche, 5'9", 180. Had 26 rushes last year. It's more of a three-headed monster for Georgia Southern with the running backs this year of Wright, LaRoche, and J.D. King. But so far, they haven't been able to move the ball downfield yet in this first quarter. Yeah, Southern, in case you're just joining us, went three and out on their first drive. On second and long, Tomlin to run the option. He goes airborne, and what a tackle by Jerron Grayer, the junior linebacker. Danny, you're a wrestling guy. What move was that? <laughs> that may have been a spine buster right there. Jerron Grayer had seven <laughs> tackles last week against Sacred Heart. Look at this again. Tomlin trying to get in, but was blindsided almost by Grayer. And don't forget, Justin, in addition to being young as a redshirt freshman, He's not very big, 5'11", 190, just 19 years old. Keep in mind, Shy Wirtz is the same height, 5'11", as well. He's got an extra 20 pounds of muscle on him. That's true. <laughs> Third and nine, he'll throw for the first time as a Georgia Southern Eagle. Well, actually, he'll try to run, and he will pick up a first down. Got it by a yard or two. An interesting move there for Tomlin. Initially going for the pass, but found an opening up the middle, ran it down. He was able to get the first down. Eagles have some momentum here. Yeah, Justin Tomlin coming out of high school in Decatur was ranked the number 68 dual threat prospect quarterback in his recruiting class, and you can see the speed on him there. All right, new first and 10. Back to Speedy LaRoche they go. Picks up about five yards. And as we're talking about quarterbacks, let's hear a little bit more about Shy Wirtz from Amy Zimmer. Amy. Greg, I've been following Shy Wirtz on the sideline. Although he's in his shorts and not guiding his team down the field this game, he is acting still like a true captain. He's in all the team huddles. And when the team is not meeting, he is standing along the sideline with his teammates, cheering them on, giving advice, clapping. He is all smiles this game and rooting for Tomlin. Guys, back to you. 
All right, thank you, Amy. Three running back look for Southern on second and five. Great option pitch to LaRoche. Up to the 49 and back-to-back -back first downs. After Southern went three and out on their first drive, Danny, looks like they're picking up some speed. Yeah, it took them some time, and now they got things moving here. Great pitch by Tomlin. And now another first down for Georgia Southern. Yeah, LaRoche had some trouble last week at LSU, just 17 yards on five carries. But, I mean, truly when you look at the stat line for that game, nothing looked that impressive because LSU looked like a possible national championship contender last week. That's one of the reasons why they're ranked number six in the nation. Georgia Southern only put up 98 total yards of offense in Death Valley. It was also just one of 12 in third down conversions. Main stack in the box on first down. Up the middle to right, pounds ahead for a gain of maybe two yards. Logan did lead the team in rushing last week. Speaking of that game at LSU, 37 yards. It just was not a a good day for the Georgia Southern offense last week. And we spoke with head coach Chad Lunsford, and he wasn't upset with the fact that they lost. It was the fact how they lost. We'll talk a little bit more about that LSU game on the other end of this break. Georgia Southern trying to make something happen. Down All right, Maine on top of Georgia Southern, 3-0 at the end of one. But, Danny, we were talking a little bit earlier about how tough that week one game against LSU was. The first couple are going to be really difficult here for Georgia Southern. They're calling it the storm before the calm because that's four really tough games in the first four weeks. Yeah, it's a little bit different than the calm before the storm. I mean, LSU, Maine, who's ranked sixth in the FCS. Next week, you go on the road of a Big Ten team. Ball is loose. Yeah, LaRoche fumbled it. High snap from Tomlin. Southern lucky to recover. Maybe they fall on it one yard ahead, maybe a yard behind. But either way, it's going to bring up third down and about 10. And for the first time, Tomlin looks uncomfortable with the option play. Yeah, and going back to those games I was talking about a moment ago, they, next week they go on the road against Big Ten Minnesota, and, and then they have their first Sun Belt Conference matchup against Louisiana, who's projected to win the Western Division. Bob the Best said they may not know their team's identity until October. Looks like we might have an early timeout on the field. First charge timeout, Maine. This would be a 30-second timeout. Yeah, no kidding, Dan. When you talk about what they're calling the storm before the calm at Georgia Southern, obviously Chad Lunsford and his crew do not look past any games, but these first four weeks are absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it's going to be tough for them. I mean, you already saw last week against LSU 55-3, to the final score. It's going to take some time, and then hopefully – Shy Worth as he's continuing to get healthy, missing this game. You wonder how he's going to be by next week's game against Minnesota. And you have to imagine that because Minnesota was so nearly upset in week one, I believe it was, gosh, I think it was South Dakota State, one of those teams up there. Uh, they're going to be on upset alert. Although the big question is, is it Tomlin or, or Wirtz next week? Third and ten. Here comes pressure for Tomlin. He's going to uncork one down the far side. That one is off the hands of Caleb Hood and great coverage that time on defense by Manny Patterson. He led the FCS in pass breakups last year. Yeah, 22 pass breakups along with three interceptions. The senior from Baltimore, Maryland. And you got to give credit to Georgia Southern trying to get Caleb Hood, the true freshman, involved. Because we spoke to Bob the best with the absence of Wesley Kennedy. The goal is to get both Caleb Hood and J.D. King involved, like two players trying to fit one slot position. Here's Anthony Beck to punt. Vertical spiral kick to the 25-26, and that's where the main Black Bear offense is going to take it. People were impressed with the punting last week of Anthony Beck. Like I said earlier, nine punts, 396 yards. Two of them were over 50 yards, and two of them were inside the 20. And if that name sounds familiar to you, if you're from around the Georgia Southern area, it should. Anthony uh, played high school football at South Effingham, which is maybe half an hour away in Rinkin. About 30, 45 minutes in Guyton, Georgia. Probably had a lot of his friends here in Statesboro watching him kick. All right, so here comes what looked like a really threatening main offense on their first drive. Second drive didn't do nearly as much. Southern appeared to get a little wiser to them. So here comes Chris Ferguson. Chris Ferguson. 
They love that play action pass, and he's got all day. Ferguson tucks and runs. Slides forward for a gain of four or five yards. And I think he was looking to go deep on that pass. And so far, 7 of 10, 41 yards. They've been short passes up the middle and letting the receivers do most of the work. And this game has moved awfully quick. Hard to believe we're already in the beginning of the second quarter. Main completed a lot of passes, which kept that moving. Ferguson so far 7 for 10 through the air for 40 yards. And then... Add in Georgia Southern's running offense, it's been fast. Not to mention when they got the field goal, that took 15 plays in order to get down the field. Second and seven, it's a flea flicker downfield for Blair. It's off his hands at the 25. And I can see the Georgia Southern fans, some are clapping. Some are holding their hearts like they almost had a heart attack. Yeah, and you know Blair has to be hating himself for that one. Beautiful flea flicker and it was only a matter of time if Ferguson went downfield. That would have been a touchdown but Blair was just fingertips away from making that catch. That was a nearly perfect version of what we saw Georgia do to Mississippi State two years ago. That looked like the same flea flicker kind of play. Oh yeah. Alright, third down and seven. Main 50% so far today on third down. That one was knocked away by the defensive line, bringing up fourth down. Nice tip away. Great block by Reynard Ellis with that 3-4 defense for Georgia Southern. You can always bring up a linebacker, and he brought Ellis up on that outside, was able to get a hand up. Now it's fourth down. And David Gelb to punt this one away for Maine. And once again, it's J.D. King back for Southern. Fair catch in front of the 30. And J.D. King, we didn't know exactly, rather that's a Jesse Liptrot by mistake. They're sharing number 15. Uh, Jesse Liptrot, a big player on defense last year, looking for a bigger role as well. Yeah, and he's got an opportunity here to fill in with Wesley Kennedy being out and a good punt from Maine. Good pun from Gelb. All right, here's Justin Tomlin again, and for more on him, here's Amy Zimmer. Earlier this week, Coach Lunsford told me he has a lot of trust in backup quarterback Justin Tomlin. He said for him to only have one snap last season and come out against the number six ranked team in the nation, LSU, and take care of the ball, he was very impressed with how he handled the situation. Coach Lundford also said Tomlin gets just about as many reps as shy words in practice. The difference is if he gets it with the first team or the second team, but in all, he has a lot of confidence in him if he's leading the team down the field this week. Leading the team downfield, throwing downfield, just barely under through Mark Mashad. Yeah, trying to get Mashad, but good stop there by Shaquille St. Lot. On the deflection. I will say this. Uh, we were not expecting Tomlin to pass much this week, Danny, if he played. Uh, his passes are pretty, is ambitious the wrong word? I mean, with Georgia Southern being a, a dominant running team, to see them go down the field on a deep pass is interesting to see. It, here goes LaRoche. He's into main territory down near the 45, and that is the first big breakaway run of the year for the redshirt sophomore, Matt LaRoche. Well, as you said earlier in the first quarter, Greg, Bob the Best said that in order to get this offense going, it starts with the O-line and the running backs. And the running backs struggled against LSU last week, trying to get things going here as the game progresses. Darren Anderson split out to the far side as the wide receiver. Always dangerous to see him out there. Out of the Maryland eye, they'll run the option. Tomlin tucks and runs. He's going to go for it, and Justin Tomlin, welcome to Statesboro! This redshirt freshman can play, folks. He only had four rushing yards on four attempts when he came in against LSU, and you talked about how he was a dual quarterback in high school, and showing off that speed, found an open hole and took it to the house. Southwest to Cobb High School in Georgia. He's a local guy. And what a run for him. It's 
Southern trying to get someone back on the field, and Emery McKenzie, the tight end to block. And Tyler Bass gets ready to put this one through if they don't have to call a timeout. And Southern will take the delay of game. Justin Tomlin, awfully impressive. What a way to score your first career touchdown here at Georgia Southern. And with the, the new rule being that a, a player can play at least four games before redshirting, he did get, see some action in one game against Coastal Carolina last year. A little garbage time. Here's Tyler Bass, one of the best field goal kickers in the group of five. That one is up and through. And Georgia Southern takes a 7-3 lead. It took a little while to score, but... The crowd is on their feet here in Paulson Stadium. Happy to see it. We'll take a quick break on ESPN Plus and back after this. And Paulson Stadium finally awake in the home opener. All right. Well, the mood inside Paulson Stadium has changed dramatically in the last 10 minutes. At the end of the first quarter, Maine was up 3-0 after a big opening drive. But as Tyler Bass gets set to kick it away, Danny Waugh, 45-yard touchdown run from Justin Tomlin has the Eagles in front. Yeah, and that's the first big play of the season for the Eagles, one they desperately needed in order to get this offense going here against the Black Bears. All right, Bass to put it in the air. Young and Edwards back to receive for Maine. That's an onside kick, but it looks like Maine was able to fall on that one in Georgia Southern Territory, but there's a flag down at the 38-yard line. I'm not sure the ball went at least 10 yards I'm not down sure it the did field. Either. Jacob Henney, the sophomore, was able to scoop it up. Yeah, heads up play. I think that didn't go 10 yards, and that's going to be the flag. Five. Five yards will be added to the dead ball spot. So it turned out it was off sides rather than the ball not going 10 yards. However, you got to give credit to Georgia Southern trying to go with some trick plays. He even caught the cameraman off guard. I was going to say that is a very Chad Lunsford thing to do to try to seize on this new momentum and extend that lead as we head towards halftime. But I tell you, giving Maine the ball on your side of the 50 is a dangerous bargain. Yeah, we saw how Ferguson almost got a touchdown pass in the previous drive off the flea flicker. Big bunch formation for the Black Bears. First time we've seen that today. Ferguson turns and gives to Reed. Short game, maybe one yard on the play for the Buffalo transfer. And I'll tell you, when Georgia Southern's gotten beat today, in the few times they have gotten beat, Danny, it's more for passing gains of five or six yards the defensive line considering there have been some movements some, some injuries the last couple weeks uh, d lines look pretty good yeah the d line has looked exceptionally well and you also don't forget with the 3-4 defense you have a linebacker coming up to the line as well to help this looks like maine's usual mo three wide outs and a tight end that's bowman in motion big tight end over the middle they go again for miller he's got a big first down on a gain of almost 15 yards Another quick slant, and Miller with the catch. Usually, if you're aware and quick like that, take a quick three-step drop, make the throw, and Miller is able to get at least five or so, at least five yards on the catch, and then whatever else he can get on his feet. That's pretty much what he did last week against Sacred Heart. Averaged 10 yards a catch last week in their season opener, and quarterback Chris Ferguson says he expects him to be all conference, all CAA by the time this year is done. Certainly looking worthy so far as they send him in motion. Here goes Reed, bouncing back to the side and picks up maybe two. And you can't forget as well for Maine. We talk about their returners and their great receivers like Andre Miller and Ernest Edwards and Jaquan Blair. You got to remember as well, Greg, they returned three offensive linemen from last season. No kidding. Yeah, Maine is one of the most experienced teams in the FCS. And on the tackle that time, as you saw, Raymond Johnson. And here comes second down and nine. Blair in motion. Ferguson going back the other way. Threw behind his man. He was going for Devin Young. 
And that'll bring up third down. Maine was really good on third down on the first drive, Danny. They converted deep twice. Since then, nothing doing on third down. Well, we'll see if Ferguson tries to go for the first down or try to go for the touchdown. Ball at 23-yard line, and we see in the strength of Ferguson's arm. Southern, one of the best third down defenses in the Sun Belt Conference last year. And the student section is on their feet here trying to intimidate the main offense, although that's hard to do against Chris Ferguson. Five wide. Off the hands of Jaquan Blair, fourth down coming up. That's the second time Blair has missed a crucial catch. First on the flea flicker, now on the third down conversion. And I will tell you, that is surprising because Jaquan Blair had a heck of a game last week. 140 yards on seven catches and a touchdown against Sacred Heart. It was like he had stick him on his hands last week. Yeah, this time it's just it's too hot in Statesboro. That stick him might be <laughs> melting on his hands a bit. Kenny Doak. Trying to put this one in. That one flies off to the left. Georgia Southern will stay up 7-3. And Chad Lunsford, a little celebration with his team. He's not below that. Rather above that. One of the most fun coaches celebrating on the sideline in the Sun Belt Conference. And I'll say this. This is a pleasant surprise. I'll be transparent. Great atmosphere in here. I'm not sure anybody expected this many people today inside Paulson Stadium. Well, it's the first home game of the season. Yeah, well, the yeah, hurricane. I mean, look, in, the, in the Georgia area, the hurricane didn't really do what we thought it was going to do. All right, handoff to J.D. King. First real time we have seen him today. Forward progress gets maybe two yards in Bob the best told us this week, Danny, if they're going to bring in J.D. King, they are expecting something out of this Oklahoma State transfer. They want him to contribute, especially without Shy and Wesley Kennedy. Yeah, he's got to make a big impact here for the Eagles on offense. I mean, one of the three options that they go to as far as running the ball and a flag was thrown out there on that play. We'll see what it is. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 64. That is number 64's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Half the distance to the goal line, the down counts, it is second down. Well, that's going to be on the center, Jacob Cooper. I mean, you saw, as you look at the replay here, when, that, when J.D. King was running on the outside, you almost saw Cooper kind of go at it with Manny Patterson. Second down and 21 for Georgia Southern. Although Tomlin has shown that he's willing to throw the ball. Instead they will go back to J.D. King. Second time this drive is up to around the 15. Short gain and that'll bring up a long third down. We saw him go deep in a few drives ago. We'll see if Tomlin will go in the air once again. Yeah, Justin is 0 for 2 so far today through the air, but they weren't bad passes, just under through Caleb Hood for what could have been a big game. Third down and 17. Southern 1 for 3 on third tonight. The option, King, brought down by that powerful main defense. Danny, we haven't talked a whole lot about this main defense in the first half. They call them the black hole, and there's a good reason why. They only allowed 80 rushing yards a game last year. That's only two and a half yards a carry. And, and not to mention, Greg, they bring back their entire defensive line and both of their cornerbacks. And that was a great read from the main defense on that third down play. They had both Tomlin and the running back covered. There was nowhere for them to go. Yeah, the black hole was the best rush defense in the whole FCS last year. Beck really gets a boot into that one. Fair catch at the 48-yard line from Andre Miller. But for the second straight drive, that's still awfully good field position for a main offense. I'll say this, though. Their first drive was certainly their best drive. They've had a hard time with a lot of real estate acquisition since. Yeah, haven't been able to move the ball that far. And then when they had an opportunity off the onside kick, 
missed a field goal. That's Andre Miller. You see him so far, their leading receiver on the night. Three catches, 33 yards. Long as 16 with a big one. And as Chris Ferguson leads this offense back out, Danny, he started seven for 10. Since then, though, he's just one for five. And that goes from the missed opportunities from Jaquan Blair. He's been targeted five times and only made two catches. Looks like they want a timeout. And that is what Nick Charlton wants. That's going to be their second. Second charge timeout. Main, this will be a pretty second timeout. I'll tell you what. We've talked a little bit about Maine here so far tonight, but you can't forget about what Chad Lumford, the head coach for Georgia Southern, said about Maine and how good Maine is. They Tell said him. that Maine is a really good team and can compete with any team in the Sun Belt, could very well be in the Sun Belt. I mean, you're looking at a team similar to Georgia Southern a long time ago before they transitioned to the FBS. I am so glad you said that. We have reached a point where when we're talking about the difference between FCS, FBS, Group of five, power five in the FCS. There are these teams in the FCS, your Eastern Washingtons, your Mains, that do go in and beat group of five teams all the time. Yeah, I I mean, you saw it from Georgia Southern, their final FCS game of the year. They upset Florida in 2013. Play action, Ferguson under pressure. Let's that one go over the head of Joe Fitzpatrick. Way to get into the backfield that time by the defensive line. Raymond Johnson with the pressure. And Raymond Johnson and Dylan Springer there putting pressure on Ferguson. Ferguson almost didn't know what to do. Ended up just throwing it away. Thought he had a man, but ended up throwing it away. Man looked borderline unstoppable on their first drive until they got into the red zone when Southern forced him to take a field goal. Since then, this is the same old Southern defense we saw last year. Quick little pass to Ernest Edwards. Overshot him, and clearly he was running a different route than Ferguson thought he was running. Yeah, talking about miscommunication right there. Ernest Edwards only been targeted, only made one catch for five yards. He's been targeted three times so far in the first half. Well, that's one of the confusing things. If you are Coach Nick Charlton for Maine, is you know that either way, Edwards is going to be guarded by Brinson or Vildor, and do you want to take that risk? First team all conference receiver versus first team all defensive member. Got to give a chance. Third and long. That one is dropped by Edwards. They went right back to him, and he couldn't hold on. That'll bring up fourth down, although I would say almost a little bit lucky because he did have that ball in his hands. Yeah, he did have possession. He even lost his shoe on the route. And take another look here. Trying to go to the middle. Monquavian Brinson coming in for great stop. Maine converted twice on third down on their opening drive. Since then, 0 for 5. David Gelb the kick. Jesse Liptrot back to receive at the 10. Kicking to our penalty remains. Yeah, Nick Charlton didn't like that. He saw him throw his hat down on the sideline. The Black Bears unable to get the punt off in time. I think what he was probably unhappy about is knowing that happened, but also looking at the clock. You give Georgia Southern the ball inside their own 20, they can easily eat eight minutes toward halftime if they have a good drive. Good snap to Gelb. Lip trot inside the 15, and here he goes. All the way up to the 35, a great 20-yard return. And we'll see how much time Georgia Southern can eat on the other side of this break. Up 7-3 on the black.
Eagles ready to start a new drive up 7-3. They capped the last drive, Danny. That's Justin Tomlin, the starter today in place of Shy Wirtz. 45-yard touchdown run for the red shirt freshman. Yeah, the biggest run of the night so far for the Eagles. This is their 18th play run in the first half. He's going deep. He's got Darian Anderson, you bet! Down to the 20-yard line. Darian Anderson is the big play threat receiver on this team. Usually run, when they run that play, he ends up in the end zone. He'll take it to the 20 this time. And don't forget, a former Georgia recruit as well. We've seen this a couple of times last season where Anderson makes a catch in wide open territory and takes it to the house. Yeah, Darian Anderson made it. four catches last year. Three were for touchdowns. If he makes the catch, he's usually behind the defense like he was there. And now things are moving. Here goes J.D. King. Gets to the 15-yard line, gain of maybe five, and they're going for it, Danny, no question. Yeah, these big plays have definitely been helping Georgia Southern here. Majority of the half, they've only gotten a couple of yards each play and haven't able to move the ball down the field. In the... Body language confidence we are seeing just on this drive alone from Tomlin. There's something a little bit different, wouldn't you say? Well, you're seeing Tomlin feel more comfortable compared to the first drive to now where he settled in. They run the option. Oh, that one's on the ground. J.D. King looks like he got it on the way back. Able to fall on it for Georgia Southern, bringing up third down. So we talk about the comfort with Justin Tomlin. Also the second time with a bad pitch in this option offense, he's fumbled it away. Yeah, another fumble right there on the offensive side for the Eagles. And they've gotten real lucky being able to, to maintain possession as well. They're going to two turnovers. And who knows what man would have done on the other side with that momentum. Darren Anderson split to the bottom of your screen. That's Malik Murray in the slot. On third down, Tomlin to throw. Fired that one low, nearly intercepted as he went for Colby Ransom. And that'll bring up fourth down, time for Tyler Bass. Well, Tyler Bass had the Lone field goal in that loss against LSU. Knocked down a 47-yarder. This is for a touchdown lead, and he's got it. 10-3, to three, Georgia Southern on top of Maine. That is 10 unanswered points for Georgia Southern. And you know Tyler Bass coming into this season after being the hero last year. We haven't really talked about how great Georgia Southern was last season, the turnaround they made. 2017, they were 2-10. and 10. Chad Launcher becomes head coach for the first full season in 2018, a 10-win season. They go to the Raycon Media Camellia Bowl, and then in the final seconds, Tyler Bass knocks down a field goal to give the Eagles the win 23-21 before the game. We saw the unveiling of the Camellia Bowl banner that's at the Football Operations Center next to the Go Daddy Bowl victory in 2015. So, you know, we've talked about the bad start to Georgia Southern that they had last week against LSU, but looking at the bigger picture, they're coming off such a successful season. And Chad Lunsford said just because they lost that first game and the way they lost, it doesn't mean it's time to hit the panic button yet. Heck no, it does not. A 10 loss to 10 win turnaround in one year. One of the great ones in recent memory at any level of college football is what Chad Lunsford pulled off in 2018. That one might have gotten through the field goal for Tyler Bass. <laughs> All right, well, Georgia Southern riding high after a couple of great drives starting late in the first quarter, Danny. Just the opposite for Maine. They looked great on their first drive in pretty abysmal sense. Yeah, those short passes aren't connecting anymore like they were in the first quarter. So it'll be interesting to see how Ferguson tries to move the ball down the field. They're only down by a touchdown, and so far in this game, he's 8 of 18. You said he, he missed the last couple of passes. Yeah, Ferguson started 7 for 10. Since then, 1 for 8. Southern is clamping down on the outside. Hand off to Emmanuel Reed. Dives ahead for seven or eight yards. 
Not a ton of running room on the ground for them. Just about 30 yards so far on the ground today. They passed for almost 60. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they go to Reed more and more here in this offense, try to move the ball, get the defensive line tired a bit, then go for the pass. Well, they did pick up seven, second down and three. Back to Reed they go. And he'll pick up a first down. The Buffalo transfer began a little steam up to the 42, and they'll start to move. Well, he was able to find the hole and get the first down. The Eagle defense sent five on what I thought was going to be a passing play. It ended up being a draw to Reed. Now, last week, a lot of carries for Emmanuel Reed, but their other two running backs in Joe Fitzpatrick and Elijah Brooks. Brooks has not taken a single handoff today and only one for Fitzpatrick. Any of the man in motion, they'll go back to Reed, and he has dropped. Almost no gain on the play. Great stop by Trevor Velum. Redshirt sophomore from Midland, Texas, had 16 tackles last season. Here comes second and 10. You can see Monquavian, Brinson, and Kindle Vildor. The first drive, I would say they almost looked gassed at the corner spots. Since then, they look confident and locked in, no hands on their knees. They're doing their jobs. Second and 10, they will go to Fitzpatrick for his second rush of the day. And he's dragged down behind the line of scrimmage. What a tackle that time by Chris Harris. You see the linebacker and Harris Jr. making a great stop. So third down and more than 10 yards. You expect Ferguson to possibly pass here. Yeah, Chris is one of the local guys on this Georgia Southern team from Savannah right down the road. Went to Benedict and Mail Theory School. He's a cadet. Was with him for a state championship in 2016, I believe it was. Third and 12. And what a wrap-up tackle by Monquavian Brinson as Devin Young hauled it in. Maine has not completed on third down and moved the chains since their opening drive. That defense has been picking up momentum for Georgia Southern. Now the offense has to produce on the other side, and we've already seen it so far with a touchdown on a field goal. One more touchdown here before this half ends will put the Eagles in a great spot. No kidding. Lip trot back inside the 20. That'll sail back into the end zone and give them good field position. All right, Georgia Southern's offense has really been rolling since late in the first quarter. I'll try to tack on a few additional points to end the half after this. Well, folks, help people affected by Hurricane Dorian. Your donation will support Red Cross preparation, response, and recovery efforts in the United States and the Bahamas. Very lucky in the Savannah and Statesboro area, Danny, that we did not feel it nearly as bad. Yeah, the, the initial track just kept on pushing up and up as the days went on. Initially, it was supposed to be a direct hit on Savannah area, but then kept on going up and unfortunately affecting parts of South and North Carolina. Are starting to drive late in the second quarter. They pitch it outside to Matt LaRoche. Picks up eight or nine yards on the play. I will say this. For the amount of times they've nearly fumbled it away on that, I love the confidence that Chad Lunsford and Bob DeBess are showing these guys by making them run that same play over and over again. Yeah, keep going and going and make sure you get it right. And a good run there by Matt LaRoche. Picking up eight yards. All right, second down and two yards coming up. LaRoche and Wright in the backfield, thunder and lightning. And they'll go to Thunder. There's right and a first down. And by the way, Danny, when we said that it looked like the Georgia Southern offense turned on a light switch midway through the first quarter, no kidding. At the end of the first quarter, Georgia Southern had 33 yards of offense. Now in the second quarter, just so far, over 120 of offense in the second quarter. And you had two plays that went for 45 yards. A pass from Tomlin to Darian Anderson, and then you had Tomlin's 45-yard touchdown run. 
to change Tomlin's number to 45 instead of 17. <laughs> New first down, back to go to Logan. They've been relying a lot on LaRoche and King early in the second quarter, so he'll continue to wind that clock as he picks up about four yards. Inside two minutes to play in the second quarter, they just want to get back in field goal range. And it must be like running to a freight train trying to stop Logan Wright and J.D. King for that matter. Logan Wright, six foot, 225 pounds, and J.D. King a solid 220 as well. Second and six, he'll throw again, or try to, comes near side, Holden at the 49, and a complete pass for Malik Murray, and that's his first of the game. And Murray only had a reception for two yards against LSU first last season, or last week, two seven. catches overall this last season. And a great job for Tomlin to get the ball out before Charles Mitchell tried to take him down in the backfield. Can we talk about how Justin Tomlin looks so confident throwing, especially considering when you and I talked to Bob DeBess and Chad Lunsford earlier in the week, they pretty much said, we just want him to take care of the ball and we're not going to ask him to throw a ton. He looks awfully confident throwing the ball. Well, like we saw so far in this first half, the first quarter, he looked a little bit shaken, making his first career start here in Statesboro. But once he calmed down, a couple of series have gone by. He feels relaxed. And you got to remember, throughout this week, with Shy Wirtz being day-to-day, Tomlin's been getting reps with the first and second string all throughout the week. And also keep in mind about this, Greg, with the hurricane coming through and, and affecting the, the Savannah area, it also canceled classes all week for these players to focus strictly on football. It absolutely did. So field goal range not that far away for Tyler Bass. First and 10 from the 49. He'll throw again far side for Caleb Hood. He's out of bounds after a gain of five yards. Uh, we've seen him quite a bit in these first two days, Danny. The true freshman out of McDonough, Georgia. Went to one of the powerhouse high schools around here in single A, Eagles Landing Christian. He won a state championship with them in high school. And he was a two-way player. Had a couple of tackles, few interceptions, and looks like he might have got a false start here on Georgia Southern. False start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Well, that's no brutal after that good play. Second runoff as Lawrence the game clock is not running the time of the pop. Yeah, but we've seen kind of a lot of Caleb Hood. Made a really good catch at LSU. Coaches seem to be high on him. He was also offered by uh, East Carolina coming out of high school. Like I said, a true freshman Caleb Hood is. Second down and 10. Pressure off the edge for Tomlin. He turned up field and ran before, and he'll do it again. Dives out of bounds. Thankfully, he looks okay. Those are the kind of plays that make your heart skip a beat with Shy Wirtz already hurts. Yeah, situations like that, you just might as well just throw the ball away and just save your body for the next play. Third down and eight for Southern. Time for Tomlin. Finds Murray for the second time this drive. Stiff arm's not going to do it. Picked up a couple of yards, but shy of the fourth down, and this is not quite Tyler Bass range. No, you need to look at the Eagles punting it high and putting Maine inside the 20. Maine's going to call a timeout here. Or you can go for it on fourth down. I mean, why not? Well, folks, we have a bunch of fun stuff coming up for you at halftime here on tonight's ESPN Plus broadcast. Talk about the first half, show you some highlights. We'll meet the new Georgia Southern president, and we're going to go under the helmet. A great feature by Amy Zimmer on the sidelines. Yeah, exciting stuff to look forward to at halftime. I mean, so far, breaking down this game, the first quarter is majority Maine. Second quarter has been all Georgia Southern on offense. You bet. All right, so out comes Anthony Beck to kick it away. Like we said, a couple absolute bombs at LSU last week. Now, McGill Bowerly is expected back next week. 
after that NCAA ruling. Question is, though, is, is it necessarily true that he's going to get his job back? Anthony Beck's been really good. It just means there's going to be a fight for that position following this game next week. Yeah, I would not be surprised even if Bowerly resumes his main role as punter. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them split a little time and see Anthony Beck get some play. Well, I feel like no matter what, Anthony Beck's a redshirt freshman, so he's going to have plenty of opportunities moving forward, but it's nice to see what he can do at this moment. And it's only going to get better from there, Greg. All right, so not a lot of time for Maine. They had a fantastic opening drive, which they tacked on a field goal at the end to. Since then, Georgia Southern has been on them like white on rice. And with 53 seconds left, no timeouts. I'm expecting Ferguson to throw a lot of plays towards the numbers and get the receiver out of bounds. Yeah, they would settle for three. This is Jaquan Blair. A couple really good catches in the first quarter, not a ton in the second. Able to move the chains there. That is his third catch of the day. Well, I know he has to be happy after missing those last two opportunities thrown to him. Main wasting no time. Going fast back near side again to Blair. That one incomplete. Good coverage that time by Daryl Baker. Forces him to stop the clock temporarily. Second down and ten. Maine not a bad kicking team either. They would settle for three at the end of this drive. Four-man rush for Southern. At a backfield they go. That's off the hands of Emmanuel Reed. And I'll say this, Danny, for a team that had over 400 yards receiving last week against Sacred Heart, a couple butterfinger plays in the first half. Yeah, it's almost like they haven't been able to get in rhythm. Ferguson now 10 of 22 passing here in the first half. I know they're going to talk about that in the locker room during halftime. Figuring out ways to get those receivers more involved and making more quick passes down the field. Yeah, and don't forget one of those drops would have been a touchdown. Right. That would be, be a tie. That would be the key play they circle when they go into the locker room. Yeah, this would be a tie game. Third and ten. Back to Reed, not going to risk it. Head coach Nick Charlton really unhappy. Got in the face of one of his coaches. I'm wondering if he wasn't happy with the play call or something. But either way, that should wind us down likely to halftime. Yeah, my, my thing is, I wonder if Chad Lunter was is gonna call a timeout here with 30 seconds or less than 30 seconds remaining, but he might let time run out. Would you see him next to one of the referees? And he's gonna call a timeout. And he is furious. He is fuming as he walks Second toward the sideline the to end the quarter. Uh, we're gonna talk with him right now as Amy Zimmer is going to make her way over at the end, but it looks like there's still a second left in the half. No, Chad Lunsford called timeout with one second left to go, and Maine thinks it's halftime, but no. Was he trolling? I don't know. <laughs> That's, I'm not sure. But I, I know Charlton is frustrated here. He is livid. Yeah, he's really not happy. And you can see he's a fired-up guy, and like we said, he's young. He's only 31 years old. Knows how to communicate and, and engage with his young players, too. Yeah. I, Look a little like I'm young just, Saban there for a second, didn't he? He was I'm going nuts. I'm just surprised nuts. that I don't, I don't know if Chad Lunsford was trolling or not, calling a timeout with one second left to go. I mean, you can only do so much. I, I don't know what to expect here. Well, Ferguson is going to throw, and he's going to throw it away. And that'll do it. Can't wait to hear this interview with Amy Zimmer in just a second. All right, Amy, uh, let's go down to you here in just a second as we hear from Nick Charlton. He doesn't look happy. All right, thank you so much, Amy. Uh, we have the halftime show coming up next. I'm sure he was not happy, whatever it was he said. We have halftime show next. Stay here on ESPN+. Plus.
Dr. Marrero, you're a music guy. Mm -hmm. How did you get here? That's a great question. I mean, it's not the normal background for a university president, clearly, nor was it one that I saw myself or, you know, in my 20s and 30s, I wasn't thinking, I want to be a university president. But for me, uh, the path along that way was aligned with my passion. I always wanted to be a performing artist. Uh, it was either engineering or music. And so for my 20s, I, I had a, was fortunate to have a career, an active career, uh, basically sang with San Francisco Opera, toured the nation with them, and National Tour of Carmen uh, was uh, two years as an artistic ambassador for the United States Embassy, so saw 14 different countries. So really it, it, it was an experience that could never be equal. You know, there isn't a day that goes by art that I don't use a, a skill or, or some type of training aspect or my life experience as being a musician to running a university. What's your most important message? People, purpose, action. Growing ourselves to grow others. That's the message that I want people to bring to their heart, to have meaning, to memorize it, every faculty and staff person. But then if you ask the second question, what does that mean to you? In a year's time, I want them to be able to answer that and say, I matter because this is what I do to impact others. I see you around campus. You're always smiling, having a good time, interacting with folks. Mm -hmm. Tell me why that's important. Look, I love people for one thing. Um, I really like the human exchange of thoughts, ideas, even when it's challenging. And it really helps me make a choice every day that the way in which I engage with people, converse, understand their perspectives, meet them where they are, and help them be everything that they can possibly be. And that starts to me always with a smile. And so, uh, uh, you know, with that, with the students, that's the easiest, obviously, because I, I just see such incredible opportunity for them and my hopes and aspirations for them along that way to support them. And so all of my colleagues here at this institution, I want them to know I care about them. Doesn't mean I'm not going to challenge them to do their very best and hold them accountable as they should hold me. But together, the way in which we'll treat each other on this journey is critical. So a smile is the first great meeting opportunity for all of us in my opinion. Three, two, one. All right, down to Amy Zimmer with Chad Lunsford. Amy. Coach, what was your message to the team in the locker room? Uh, that, that team over there is in that locker room believing they can win the ball game. Our defense has got to go play even better, get some takeaways. Our offense is leaving too much out there. we got to start being more explosive on offense and more points on the board. What do you take away from Tomlin's performance in the first half? Uh, I think he's doing a good job. You know, there's some things, but he's uh, doing a good job for his first start. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. And, uh, Amy, really quickly, the microphone went out at the end of the first half with head coach of Maine, Nick Charlton. What was it he said, and why was he so mad I'm staying with you guys here we're just gonna walk to the side of the field but yes coach on main side was very frustrated before the first half when he walked off the field he was taking off his hat and throwing his headset and when I talked to him he told me he's just frustrated the team's not performing the way that they should they know they're capable of doing better however when they go into the locker room I asked him what's the message to the team and he said that it's just time to play main football this is not how we play we're only down by one touchdown and it's time to get it together boys guys back to you all right well that's a good enough reason for him to be mad there is Head coach of Maine, Nick Charlton, in his first full season, the offensive coordinator last year. I'll tell you, that first Maine drive, Danny, that looked like the Maine team that went to the Final Four last year. Rest of the first half, not so much. Yeah, and it makes sense why he, why he was frustrated there in the second quarter because you saw a lot of opportunities where you could have got the ball down the field but missed catches from different wide receivers. And Chris Ferguson, the first half, 10 of 23. And, yeah, you're right, Charlton – Telling his team to play main football here in the second half, the same main team that dropped 42 points on Sacred Heart last week. I mean, this is still anybody's ball game, Greg. Only one touchdown separating the two teams. That's exactly right. You and I were both saying, and as we talked to a couple people here in the press box at halftime, this game is not done. We saw Maine look really good on the opening drive, and if we know Nick Charlton, which we do in the college football world, does based on what Maine did in the FCS last year, their offense is so palpable and so capable. I would not be surprised to see them score the first time they get the ball in the second half. Well, we'll see if Georgia Southern can score with a possession here to start the second half. They can get ahead here with a touchdown. They'll be in, good, in a good spot. Well, obviously, here comes a flag. 
Leg game, kicking team, number 36, five yard penalty. Continue with the kickoff. Yeah, they moved that one back five yards for delay. Back to receive for Georgia Southern, Monquavian Brinson back at the 10 now. And I'll tell you, he took a big hit, but I was pleasantly surprised to see Monquavian back returning kicks this year. I'm very interested to see how he does back here now. Also, you have Jay Bowdry out there in the back on the 15. All right, here's Cameron Carson to boot it away to start the second half. Brinson's going to let that one bounce out of bounds and good field position coming up for Southern. Very smart from Monquavian. And you have to remember as well, Greg, in the home opener last season against South Carolina State for Georgia Southern, it wasn't a runaway game as well. It took some time for that offense to get set and get ready and feel comfortable throughout that game. Well, the first half was a tale of two quarters for this Georgia Southern offense. In the first quarter, just 33 yards of offense. But I rule the ball will be placed 25 yards from the spot of the kick at the 40-yard line. First like we said, great field position for Southern, but 33 yards of offense in the first quarter. Second quarter, more than 120. And all because of the turnaround efforts of the young redshirt freshman quarterback making his first start as a Georgia Southern Eagle, number 17, Justin Tomlin. High snap, he's on the ground. Smart kid, able to recover back on the 25. Way to be heads up. That's not the way he probably wanted to start the second half. That was the bad snap. That wasn't yeah, Justin. That was going way over his head there. That's on Jacob Cooper on the high snap. So Georgia Southern has played with fire three times. They pitched away and fumbled an option play twice, and that should have been a turnover as well. Yeah, once again, another close break for the Eagles. It was interesting here on the offensive side. Everyone's been having an equal chance to move the ball down the field. In the first half, Tomlin, Matt LaRoche, Logan Wright, and J.D. King all had five carries each. Bad pass that time. He was going for J.D. King on the option. That'll bring up third down and 23. A little sloppy. If I'm Jordan Southern, I'd probably just run the ball right here and not try to go for a deep ball. Yeah, clearly... Not the way they wanted to come out to start the second half. And just a reminder, like Coach Lunsford said, uh, this game is not done. Maine is, in case you're just joining us, one of the best teams in the FCS. Number six in the FCS in the country right now. Third and 23 to Logan Wright. Stays on his feet. He's got a couple of blocks. Is he going to pick up the first down? You bet. And more. Logan Wright. Down inside the five-yard line. The redshirt sophomore out of Jacksonville, Florida. What a way to save this team to begin the second half. And that was all willpower right there. Able to break out of a couple of tackles at the line of scrimmage. Finds a nice hole. One guy can't take him down. Great blocking on the outside as well from Colby Ransom, giving him that space, and then send it down the sideline. Almost got the touchdown, but Manny Patterson coming up to make the tackle. Both teams scored on their one trip to the red zone in the first half, both one for one. Tomlin. Oh, he fumbled it again. This one's on the turf. Maine has it back to the 20-yard line. And what a recovery by Richard Carr, the sophomore DB. They played with fire one too many times and got totally burned. It's only a matter of time. They got lucky so many times being able to reclaim the possession. That was a great strip right there from Maine, number 18. It's Alejandro Ogeron. Ball got away from Tomlin and Maine recovers. That's the momentum that they need right there. Well, Chad Lunsford wasn't kidding. Just because they're down a touchdown does not mean the team has given up the fight. Maine is going to have a ton of momentum to begin their first drive of the second half. And they'll throw. Despite a blitz into coverage off the hands of Ernest Edwards. Great knock away by Monquavian Brinson. Well, I understand the 
the choice to go deep on that first play. Defense had to quickly come back out on the field after, well, the big play from Georgia Southern and then the fumble on the offense, trying to catch him off guard and go downfield for a quick score. And it is worth saying, just like last week at LSU and like pretty much every other game Southern played last year, yeah, you might beat them for five yards. You are not beating Brinson and Vildor for 20 yards. Second and ten. Here's Reed for the second time, for the first time in this second half. Got a gain of about five yards. Pretty impressive in the first half, huh? Yeah, he had a couple of good runs there in the first half. Nine carries for 38 yards in the first. More importantly, he served as a really nice balance to that spread passing attack. Yeah, it just shows how many weapons Ferguson has, and you can always just go to the running back whenever you least expect it. Third down and five. Empty set, Ferguson to throw. Finally goes down for a sack, although it took a couple of minutes. That was Vleem. Yeah, Vleem with a good stop, and initially the defense showed blitz, but then dropped back. Nobody open for Ferguson the pass two and a quick three and out. Yeah, second big play of this game for Traver Vleem. And Georgia Southern, despite finally committing an egregious turnover is going to get away pretty much unscathed. At least on this drive. That one nearly blocked. Ran into the kicker and a flag is back. That one hauled in at the 40-yard line, but that's bad news for Georgia Southern. No guessing what this one is. Roughing the kicker. Receiving team number 26, 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, that was really bad news for Georgia Southern. And I believe Lane Dolphins is going to come back on the field now. Yeah, that was Javon Singletary, the culprit. And all of a sudden, Maine gets to keep this drive going despite Georgia Southern's defense putting the clamps on. So he spoke too soon there for a moment, saying the Eagles are coming out unscathed, and then the penalty happens. Speaking too soon, speaking too much. It's the way I live my life, Danny. <laughs> I live on the edge. First and 10, 12 minutes to go in the third quarter. Ferguson pumps. Looks to dump off. He's got a man. That's Sean Bowman, the redshirt freshman tight end, for a gain of about eight yards. Now, we saw him mostly as a blocking tight end in the first half. He's a big dude, 6'5", 240. But they're excited to make him go out there and catch passes sometimes, too. Yeah, the dual threat over there at the tight end spot. He had two catches last week for 34 yards against Sacred Heart. All right, second down and four, trips out to the right. Back to Fitzpatrick and whistles and flags coming in. Offense, number 30, five yard penalty, remains second down. Correction, player number 38, second down. All right, so we'll do it again. Penalties on Bowman. And I'll tell you, the mood inside Paulson Stadium has changed a couple of times over the course of this game. It was very excited at the beginning. Everyone was excited to see the amount of people in the stands. It palpably got nervous after that first main drive where they went all the way down the field and then put three on the scoreboard. Second down and nine, Ferguson. Goes over the middle. That play has been working for them all night long. It's hauled in again by Bowman around the sticks. There's a flag down. But I'll tell you, it is back to feeling palpably nervous inside Paulson after that giveaway. Yeah, once Ferguson feels comfortable and gets a pass or two completed down the field, who knows what else he's going to do. We'll see what the penalty is on here. be 
on Maine. That was the thing about Maine last week against Sacred Heart. They had 17 penalties in that game. And still managed to kick their teeth in. Legal touching. Offense. Number 38 of the offense was covered by an outside receiver and subsequently went down and caught the pass. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. And once again, another penalty on Sean Bowman. So a big haul in, nearly first down for him, and then he's pushed him back a couple of times. It's almost like he's going two, step fo two steps forward and taking three steps back. Yeah, this is going to bring up second down and 14 for him as the sun is beginning to set in Statesboro. And Maine is looking all out of sorts after being given an unbelievable gift of that giveaway a few minutes ago. From the 34. Ferguson with a deep shot for Young. Kindle Vildor on the coverage. Just tight, no flag, third down. And Devin Young was trying to go for that pass with great coverage from Vildor. That's why he's a preseason defensive player of the year in the Sun Belt. It's funny, uh, I was in Baton Rouge last week. I, I went to Georgia Southern at LSU. I went to the Chad Lunsford post-game press conference, obviously, but it was cool to see in the intro and the come away from that game, Ed Ogeron, the head coach at LSU, said Kendall Vildor is a pro football player, that he's going to be in the NFL. Third and 14. Ferguson nearly threw that one intercepted. The only one in the neighborhood was Ernest Edwards, and Rutledge had his hands on it. Yeah, Donald Rutledge able to come in, almost got the pick. And you talk about Eagles in the NFL, and he currently have four right now. Yeah, Matt got Green, a couple. Jared McKinnon with the 49ers, Akeem Elijahway with the Titans. Well, he's on the roster, but Jared McKinnon, that it's a bummer out for the season yet again, huh? Well, one negative for that, but a positive, Matt Breida beating out Tevin Colbert for the starting running back job for the 49ers. Yeah, so Matt Breida will start in the backfield for the Niners this year. Very exciting for him. Back to the 30, lip trots on the ground. Flag in two. I'll tell you, it is the agony and the ecstasy with this Georgia Southern team in the last hour, Danny. Maine got the football. Let's see if it's going to be Maine's possession. This has been a challenging game for Georgia Southern so far because you can see on multiple occasions, Greg, how much they missed their star quarterback, Shy Wirtz, and more importantly as well, how much they missed their... Mr. Everything, Wesley Kennedy. This is going to be a huge call. If Maine gets this ball, Georgia Southern Twitter is going to go nuts. And the fans in the stands, too. But, you know, mainly Twitter. Here we go. Kick gets interfered. Kicking team number 24. 15 yards will be from the spot of the foul. First down. Time out on the field. And once again, a gift for Georgia Southern. And once again, the penalties rack up for Maine. Let's see if Georgia Southern can turn it around here in the third quarter and clean up the mistakes. That's next. Well, the Eagles get the ball back, but I'm not sure how Chad Lunsford is smiling right now, Danny. Must be a sigh of relief right now. We'll see how the offense can do moving the ball down the field once again. Well, I guess. Here they come on first down as he's going to go downfield into coverage. He was going for Logan right on the wheel route. That one goes incomplete. Tomlin was targeting his running back. That'll bring up second down and 10. And in case you're just joining us, that was one heck of a start to the second half. Georgia Southern had it down inside the five of Maine. Gave it away on a fumble. Maine kicked it away. Southern fumbled the kick. And luckily enough, able uh, to recover. And don't forget the bad snap on the first play of the second half. Lucky to be alive on second down. Here's Tomlin on the keeper option. He's got a first down and more. The red shirt freshman. Inside the five, another big run for Justin Tomlin. Justin Tomlin. 
That one about 50 yards. Well, it looks like he careened straight into the brick. Well, it's been the big plays that's been keeping Georgia Southern within this game. He saw the 70 yard run from Logan Wright. And he, now he's here in the option. Ends up keeping it. To 10. I think he stepped out near the five and oh, he slipped as he was trying to slow down. Earth to Justin, you're not the Kool Aid man. First down and goal. On the ground, down to the three goes Matt LaRoche. Now, last time Georgia Southern was in this position, I mean, how many minutes ago, Danny? They fumbled it away. They have to be really careful to make this up. They need this touchdown. Yeah, they need it in order to stay ahead and have a significant lead here over Maine. It's just a bunch of unnecessary fumbles. Second down and goal. King and Wright in the backfield. On second it is J.D. King. And the black hole defensive line for Maine gobbles him up. Third down and goal. I'll tell you, Danny, Southern has had really good luck on big plays and going through the air. But on short yardage situations, the main defensive line has come as advertised. Yeah, and J.D. King hasn't been able to get anything done here so far in this game. Now seven carries in less than five yards so far in this matchup. And we've seen big plays from Tomlin, from Wright, from LaRoche. But King hasn't been able to get active yet. This is a huge third down for Georgia Southern. And it looks like Chad Lunsford and Georgia Southern want a timeout. That's a pretty smart call, I would say. Might as well take the time to draw it up. Oh, yeah. Think this thing through, figure it out before you make another mistake. Before First potentially another mistake out. happens. Georgia Southern. This will be That's a exactly right. Timeout. And if I know Chad Lunsford, which both of you and I do, if we were able to feed him some truth serum right now, I think what he would say is Maine could potentially be leading this game. Oh, yeah if those mistakes had all come to fruition. I mean, there's been mistakes on both sides. And the question is, what is Georgia Southern going to do here on this third down play? They need to try and get a touchdown. I mean, you have Tyler Bass warming up in case he needs to kick a field goal to put three on the board. But if you're the Eagles, you want to get in the end zone. Yeah, the good news is you have Tyler Bass waiting. Either way, any points will put you up more than a touchdown. But you'd rather be up 13 than 10. Tomlin, the keeper, tries to fall forward. He's not going to get there. And once again, the main red zone defense comes up big. It's going to be Tyler Bass time in all likelihood for Georgia Southern. And this is the fourth red zone possession, and so far the Eagles have only been able to convert on one of them. Their first. Their, their first, yeah. And that's a surprise because I, I know Shy Wurtz is not playing, but here's the thing. Georgia Southern was one of the best red zone teams on offense and defense in the Sun Belt last year. Well, Tyler Bass, last year for Georgia Southern, was a phenomenal kicker. 15 for 19 on field goals in 2018, including the one that won them the Raycom Camellia Bowl. This is a short one, 22 yards. Sends that other one through, and they will settle for a 10-point lead. Georgia Southern midway through the third, up 13-3 on Maine. But the Black Bears are threatening and are not going away. Chris Ferguson gets that ball. Tyler Bass, Danny, Mr. Dependable. Yeah, six plays, 51 yards on that drive, capped off with a field goal. From Tyler Bass, the second made one tonight, third of the season. And any points is better than no points, Greg. 13 to 3 now, and Maine's going to have to work here if they want to try and put some points on the board. And I will say this we're here in Paulson Stadium. We can feel this atmosphere as Tyler's ready to kick it away. You would think scoring there would have made this a little bit less nervous. This crowd is no less nervous. No, if it was a touchdown, exactly. it would have a different story. Yeah. But only able to pick up a field goal there. 
The game's not over yet. Yeah, so Chris Ferguson started this game absolutely on fire as the main quarterback. He was 7 for 10. Right now he's 11 for 27. Georgia Southern has clamped down on him so hard. You wonder if he can keep that going, though, because of how talented he is. I would actually say it's not his fault. His receivers just aren't getting open. Yeah, not getting open. Some of them not making catches. I mean, so far we've seen Ferguson go for the short passes. He's tried to go deep a couple of times, but unable to connect on any of them. All right, they said Miller in motion. He's been great tonight. Up the middle, they go to Reed. Dives his way up to the 26, picks up rather the 24-yard line, rather the 30. Man, what's wrong with my eyes? <laughs> call that a call that a gain of four yards as Danny talks and I get my glasses. Well, a good run. First down from Reed. And you wonder if Maine's going to go with the running game more as the second half rolls on and try to rely on the passing game. Well, you know where I'm curious about, where is Elijah Brooks, their third running back, who's a senior who was pretty good last week against Sacred Heart. Been absent tonight on second down. Here comes Blitz. Ferguson steps up, throws downfield into coverage, and it's hauled in by Ernest Edwards. He shakes one man. He's down inside the 20, and that is why he is their number one weapon. There you have it, Maine going up a deep ball once again, and this time they connect. Laleem almost got the sack on Ferguson, but Ferguson got it out just in time. And a great game for the Black Bears. All right, let's go down quickly to uh, Amy Zimmer. Amy. Or not, here comes Maine on first down. Six and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Back in the southern red zone. Play action. Ferguson gets rid of it. Finds Bowman his tight end. Spins down to the five or the six. And here come the Black Bears. And once again, Ferguson able to get it off in time before he gets sacked in the backfield. Maine has only been into the red zone once tonight. That was on their first drive. They settled for a field goal. No touchdown. First and goal from the five. Here goes Reed. Down to the two or the three. Balls on the ground. Southern says they have it inside the five. Is a fumble by the offense. You gotta be defense. kidding me. First now down, Georgia Southern down. catches the break. Both teams with some unfortunate fumbles. We'll take another look and see where this ball went out. Hand off to Reed. And there you see the ball poked out, and Monclavian Brinson was looking for it. Thought he had it. I'm gonna pile up down there by the three. So we're like a little more than halfway through the third quarter. Both teams have fumbled it away inside the five yard line. Maine's calling their team back to their sideline. I'm wondering if this is under review or if it's a timeout. Looks like this is a booth review, so we're gonna have to wait a minute or two. Now we have a couple great camera angles for our broadcast on ESPN+. Plus. We have a couple on the sideline, a couple up top in the press box, and one on each side of the field. So these referees have a ton of good angles to look at. The question is, with so many people diving on that ball, is that going to be conclusive either way? It's going to be an interesting one to see in the review. Because for a moment there, we didn't even know the ball went out. And then the big pile up. By the way, that was Gavin Adcock that fell on it from Watkinsville, Georgia. 
And this is going to be huge. If Georgia Southern retains the possession of the fumble, they catch their biggest break of the game so far. If Maine gets this back, they get another chance, and they might punch it in. Here's a good look. We don't see where the ball After goes out. Man, that really thing is so stands. covered up. Fumble recovered by Georgia Southern. Push Play out. stands Southern ball. Huge. This is turning into a game of survival at this point. You see multiple turnovers in this third quarter alone. I'm trying to think of a game to compare it to. I mean, it's as physical as Red Rover, but is there a game where you keep handing it like hot potato? All right, well, Georgia Southern gets it back inside their own five. First down. Tomlin really backed up as he gives it to Speedy LaRoche. And that's why he's Speedy. Matt LaRoche from the three-yard line. Push down at the 20. And Georgia Southern gets outside the shadow of their own goal post. Biggest play of the night for Matt LaRoche. As incredible as a play that is, what's important here for Georgia Southern is how you follow up after that big play. Because we saw the 70-yard run from Logan Wright, and then you saw the Eagles turn the ball over. You don't want to have a repeat of what happened earlier in the quarter. And I will tell you, a three-point field goal for Georgia Southern they would take it. A touchdown might start to put this thing out of reach. Here goes Wright. Dives down inside the 15, and here is the energy, the power of Paulson that Chad Lunsford always talks about. You can feel the change in this stadium. And how incredible the power of Paulson is, especially from what we saw last season in that 10-win campaign for Georgia Southern in 2018. Yeah, Georgia Southern, by the way, the closer they get to the end of this game with the lead, the better it looks. They are 28-6 in, in home openers all time at Paulson. Second and short, here's Logan Wright. Looks like he was a little short on that play. And when you talk about the history of this stadium period, Georgia Southern... 192 and 40. That's an 83% home winning percentage. And one of the top percentages in the nation as well when you think about it. I mean, last season, the Eagles went 5 and 1 here at Paulson. One of the big wins being against Appalachian State, who was ranked 25th in the nation at the time. Their first ever win against a top 25 opponent. Big third and one. To J.D. King, the Oklahoma State transfer dives forward. I don't think he got that. He only got to the 15. It might be Tyler Bass time again. Yeah, he came up short, actually lost a half a yard on the play. So Tyler Bass it is. This would make it 16 to three in a 13 point lead. That is not quite out of reach. That's still a two touchdown game. What we've seen here so far is that each running back has been getting an opportunity to try to push the ball down the field, and we've seen bigger runs from LaRoche and Wright, but J.D. King has had some trouble here so far tonight. Bass from 31. He is absolutely automatic. 16-3 to Georgia Southern. They have not pulled away yet, but as we end the third quarter, at least get pretty close to it. Maine is running out of time for that offense to heat up. Bunch of really interesting games in the Sun Belt Conference, but the one we didn't have room on the graphic for, Danny, is the big one. Furman is smoking Georgia State seven days after Georgia State beat Tennessee. Yeah, and talk about the the opening victory for Georgia State, being able to win over an SEC team like Tennessee. Apparently the Furman fans are chanting, we want Tennessee. I, I don't blame them. Love that. All right, three minutes to play in the third quarter. A couple of field goals from Tyler Bass have been essential to Georgia Southern taking this 13-point lead. That one flies out, and good field position out coming for Maine. All right, so what happened to Georgia Southern at the beginning of the third quarter is what just happened to Maine. Big play from Maine all the way downfield to Ernest Edwards. 
They got inside the five-yard line. They fumbled it away. Southern got back and went downfield themselves and turned it into points. Considering how fiery a guy we have seen Nick Charlton is, you bet your bottom dollar he just smoked his team on the sideline and told them to go out and score. Yeah, he's furious. He's probably furious right now after the Eagles putting more points on the board, but he has to feel a little bit lucky and relaxed considering that he's just been field goals so far throughout this third quarter. On first down, Ferguson hands it off to Emmanuel Reed. Good take down alongside the line of scrimmage that time by Raynard Ellis. He's had a good game. He has, and Greg, you talked about upsets like Georgia State over Tennessee. How about this current school right now? Louisiana Monroe currently up 35-31 to on Florida State with seven minutes to go wow. in the game. Well, I, knew Florida, I knew I didn't like Florida State this year. <laughs> I didn't know I didn't like them that much this year. All right, second down and eight after the short game from Reed. One of those little bullet passes over the middle to Blair. Short gain on that time, brings up third down. And I'll tell you, Sunbelt looked good last week, largely too, outside of Georgia State beating Tennessee. Uh, Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns, played Mississippi State really tough. They were winning for a while. Not to mention South Alabama put some points on the board against Nebraska as well. All right, here's a big third down coming up for Georgia Southern. For the Southern defense, rather. Third down and three. Ferguson moves out of the gun. This is a wildcat play. Reed's going to keep it himself, and he's not going to get it. Once again, the edge rushers from Georgia Southern do a great job. What's surprising to me, Craig, is that ever since Maine got those two third down conversions in the first quarter, they are now 0 of 10 on third down conversions so far. You bet. They have a really good luck on first and second down, picking up chunks of yards, but when it comes to third, that Southern defense ramps up. Liptrot standing back at the 31-yard line for Southern. As David Gelb puts a boot into it, no pressure. Waves that one off as it flies out of bounds just inside the 30-yard line. And just inside a minute to go here in the third quarter. I wouldn't say Georgia Southern smells blood in the water, but a field goal or a touchdown, and they start to feel a little comfortable. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's good that they've been able to send the ball downfield, but only getting field goals is not going to be enough here. You still have a whole other quarter left, and who knows what else is going to happen. you got to be able to execute when you're in the red zone. That's exactly right. For what it's worth, Georgia Southern has never lost to Maine. They've played them three times. All back in the D1AA playoffs, and all three times in Paulson Stadium, came away with three wins. And let's see what Justin Tomlin can do as we near the end of the third quarter. King offsets the eye. They'll run the option. This has been scary tonight. That's a good pitch to Matt LaRoche. And that's his second big run as he's into main territory. All right, Speedy LaRoche looking good in the third quarter, Danny. Yeah, able to get past a couple of Maine defenders. We've got a man down for Maine on the Eagles sideline. Here you see once again Tomlin pitches out. Good block. And then LaRoche able to get the first down and then some. Yeah, so far Matt LaRoche leading the team in rushing tonight. Put him over 115 yards as of that run. Of course, that had a lot to do with the 75-yard breakaway he had earlier. And we are trying to get an ID. This was clearly someone on the main defense. It looks like it might be a single-digit player on the field. We're going to take a quick injury timeout on ESPN+. Plus. 
We'll have more information on this from Amy Zimmer on the other side of the break. On to the fourth quarter we go at the 2019 season home opener in Statesboro. Eagles on top, 16 to three. 16 unanswered points by Georgia Southern after Maine punched it in for, rather kicked it in for a field goal on their first drive of the night. They've been quiet since. So Southern up 13 here on second down and six. They run the option. Justin Tomlin evades a defender, comes up just a little bit short of the first down. That'll bring up third and short. But Danny Waugh, this game does not feel done yet. No, it's not over. And until Georgia Southern can, can punch it in and get a touchdown and convert in the red zone, it's still going to be a close game throughout the rest of the way. They've had multiple opportunities to get down to the red zone, a couple of big plays, but some unnecessary turnovers have come along the way as well. We've seen it on both sides here throughout the night. Yeah, it has been a sloppy game, and... I watched Bears Packers this week. <laughs> Third and one. Tomlin. First down and more. He already broke off a big one tonight, and he's down to the 11-yard line. This kid is impressive, Danny. Once again, another big run for Tomlin. And he's just gotten comfortable as the game has rolled on. I'll tell you. The way he looks comfortable running that option and then tucking and running, that's the way Shy Wirtz looked as a freshman, no? Absolutely. That kid looks comfortable running that play. At least when he keeps it, he's nearly fumbled it away a couple of times, too. New first down to LaRoche. Cuts up field and takes it in! Speedy LaRoche, 150 yards on the night, and a touchdown. <laughs> 22 to three Southern, but a flag on the play. Offside, defense number five, penalties decline, goes the plays the touchdown. All right, Danny, that was a big one. Yeah, that, that right there is the play they needed. 11 yard touchdown run from LaRoche able to bounce on the outside, miss a couple of defenders. And would you and look at that? Shy Wirtz was right there to high five and greet LaRoche and Justin Tomlin, just as a captain should. Here's Bass for 23. And now the party is on at Paulson. Maine's not dead yet, but that's 23 unanswered points from Georgia Southern. This offense looks awfully good now. Well, now that puts pressure on Maine when they come back out here on the field on offense. And, you know, it was one thing when the Eagles were just getting field goal after field goal, but now they actually got a touchdown. Other than the big play we saw from Tomlin in the second quarter, that's going to put some pressure on Maine. They expect them to make some, some interesting decisions here moving forward. You may see Ferguson just try and throw the ball as much as he can. Well, he has been awfully good in the first half, second half. He's had his moments, and he's completed a couple of big passes, including one in the third quarter to Ernest Edwards. 14 for 30 tonight, which is uh, striking Danny in comparison to, to last week, where he went 23 for 29, three touchdowns, and over uh, 400 yards. Well, that pass to Edwards was the, the biggest play of the offensive side for Maine, a 53-yard pass down the field. Unfortunately, they fumbled the ball inside the 20. And I would not blame Ferguson for Maine's inability to score since the first drive of the game he's actually looked good the problem is the main receivers just are not getting any space against the southern secondary and linebackers well as amy zimmer said when talking to nick charlton they said he gotta get back to playing main football they made some mistakes and you know they've had some good looks here and there but those mistakes continued throughout the second half and i will tell you there was a re re real palpable feeling of of anxiety about this game around campus and around Savannah this week. People were nervous knowing what they knew about the main defense and how they played last week on offense against Sacred Hearts. And there was real palpable worry that this game might be an upset special. But a 23-3 lead in the fourth quarter is making people feel a little bit better as that one is off the hands of Ernest Edwards. 
Well, what fans were afraid of was a bit of deja vu from the 2017 season because That's it started exactly out right. the same way for Georgia Southern. Opened up the season on the road against a tough SEC opponent. In 2017, it was Auburn. Then they were supposed to have their first home game against an FCS opponent. But then a hurricane came around. But in 2017, the game got moved from Statesboro to Birmingham, Alabama, which was a neutral site for the Eagles. And the Eagles ended up losing that game to New Hampshire. Second and 10, dump off to Young. Gets out of bounds, shoved around the 32. Not quite a first down. That'll bring up third and short. And then don't forget, they also lost that, that third game back in 27, uh, 2017 as well. To a Big Ten and team. Thing, and things do not get any easier next week. Let us not forget, after this game, Southern goes to Minneapolis to play the Golden Gophers. Yeah, some Georgia Southern fans were afraid that it was going to turn to another 2 and 10 situation, but that's not the case here. Eagles with a good 20-point lead, trying to maintain and hold on to get their first win of 2019. Third and short, Young goes in motion. Bullet pass, and it's held in by Young. You gotta be kidding me. He takes it all the way down inside the 35. That is the circus play of the day for Maine. That should have been caught, intercepted, and then dropped. Somehow it ends up being a huge gain. You see right there when Young was trying to hold on to the pass, and his hands went up and the ball went up as well, but he was able to hold on, make the play. Kendrick Duncan Jr. looks like he's holding on to his right leg. Looks like he'll be just fine. All right, so Maine not dead quite yet, but only 12.45 to go. Southern being the highly efficient running team they are that eats the clock. You wonder if it might be a little too little too late for the Black Bears. Unless they just go deep every play. Ferguson's not afraid to do that. As we see, he'll take a deep shot overshot Jaquan Blair and he's lucky that one was not intercepted uh, by Monquavian Brinson and uh, speaking of injuries like we had a second ago let's go down to Amy Zimmer with a main update I talked to Maine's head athletic trainer and he told me that Number eight for Maine, who just recently went down, has sustained a right upper body injury and that he will not be returning to the game. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks, Amy. That was Jerron Grayer who went down there, linebacker. Uh, that one is hauled in by Emmanuel Reed on the wheel route, and he's got a first down for Maine. And that's not good for the linebackers of Maine because you're already down a man in Deshaun Stevens. Now Jerron Grayer is out. One of the guys that we highlighted on the defensive side for the Black Bears and Taji Lowe, we haven't really seen him throughout this game. All right, first and 10. They'll dump it off to Reed again that time, overshot him. And that'll bring up second down and 10. Although I would say, I think they would rather have a dropped pass than a two or three yard completion just for the sake of the clock in this game. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean. If anything, if Ferguson from here on out, if he can't find the man that's open, he should just throw it away. Don't try to force anything. And, and if you're a Maine fan, you might be wondering, why are they talking about the clock with 12 minutes left? Believe me, if you know the history of Georgia Southern football and the way this team runs the offense, fourth quarter down points is not where you want to be. Ernest Edwards is going to throw to the end zone. That's Devin Young. Touchdown, Black Bears. Maine is not dead yet. Wow. Desperate times come for desperate measures, and Charlton going deep in the playbook for some trickery for the touchdown. And you got to love college getting just one foot in versus two. So here's Edwards. They limited him as a receiver tonight. And Devin Young just needed the one foot. 
That's his second touchdown catch of the season. He had a one last week against Sacred Hearts. And here comes Kenny Doak to kick for just the second time tonight. All right, Danny, back to 13 points. And if Maine's offense looks the way they did on that drive, this thing may still be competitive and to be determined. Southern gets it back next. All right, well, the Maine Black Bears still have some life left in them. But, Danny, we got a couple other really good games right now in the Sun Belt. Yeah, how about Louisiana Monroe and Florida State? Less than a minute to go. Monroe has the ball at Florida State trying to pull up another upset for a Sun Belt team taking down a Power 5 team. Also, Georgia State only down by three at halftime to Furman, 20 to 17. South Alabama up 19 to 7 over Jackson State. Texas State up 14 to 10 at halftime over Wyoming. Kansas just a one point lead, 7 to 6 over Coastal Carolina. Liberty and Louisiana are tied at 14 to 7 to go in the second quarter. Appalachian State earlier defeated Charlotte 56 to 41. And later at 10 p.m., we'll see Arkansas State take on UNLV. Sun Belt stand up. Monquavian Brinson still standing up. Almost to the 40-yard line that time for the all-conference corner. What a night for the fun belt. Wow. Say, it's called the fun belt for a reason. Yeah, We've no seen kidding. some interesting games so far throughout the first two weeks. Fun belt stand up. I love it. And that just makes the conference stronger as a whole, and you can't wait to see how these teams from the conference duke it out over the next few weeks. Well, I'll tell you, the last couple of minutes until Maine finally scored that touchdown, it felt like Southern might have this game in hand, but we'll see how Justin Tomlin leads his team out here. This is just a 13-point game. It's not done yet if Maine's offense looks as good as they looked on that last drive. That's Logan Wright, gain of about four yards. And like we said at the beginning of this broadcast, the main defense was the best rushing defense in the FCS last year. They've been hot and cold tonight. They could really use a good couple of plays here. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. They bring back all four members of their defensive line from last season. And if they want to keep themselves in this game, they need a big stop here. Big run for J.D. King. One man to beat for the Oklahoma State transfer, and he's shoved out just in front of the 30-yard line. And finally, a, a great run from King, who... We've been waiting a while. Yeah, it took him some time to get going here, and, and now when you have all three running backs going and in motion, it's going to be tough to stop this Georgia Southern offense. I mean, it's seasons early, and it's taken some time for these three running backs to, to get settled in and get comfortable, but as the season rolls on, they're going to be a big threat to other Sun Belt Conference teams. And just you wait until Wesley Kennedy gets back in a couple of weeks, huh? And also Shy Worth when he returns. Sun Belt look out. New first down back to King. Powers ahead, gain of six or seven. I mean, you got to remember at some point last season with about three or four weeks left, it was a three-way tie in the Eastern Division between Georgia Southern, Appalachian State, and Troy. It was fun last year. It was fun. It went down to that home matchup between the Eagles and Troy. Unfortunately for the Eagles, Troy got the win. That was part of the two back-to-back -back losses late in the year for Georgia Southern against the Trojans and Louisiana Monroe. Southern winding that clock down inside the 10-minute mark. Second and five to right. It looked like he was going to get taken down to the line of scrimmage, but that bowling ball out of Jacksonville, Florida, turns it into a first down. And it's hard to take out a guy that's six foot, 225 pounds, a truck coming up the middle. And you talked about how important it is for Maine to stop the run because points or no points for Georgia Southern. Good play after good play. They'll take six, seven minutes off the clock. And even a field goal here puts it over a 14-point game, turns it into a three-touchdown game. 
And that might be enough with this much time left. Back to LaRoche. He's already got a touchdown, and he's down inside the 15. And that puts him over 150 yards on the night. I mean, we spoke with offensive coordinator Bob the Best leading up to this game about the three running backs in LaRoche, Wright, and King. And he said they don't have a guy that's going to be the guy. So they have all three of these running backs getting a fair even amount of carries. This just in with LaRoche, Tomlin, and Wright all over 100 yards rushing. This is the first game since 2012 that Southern has three 100-yard-plus rushers. Although Wright's not going to add to his total there. I mean, but that's a great stat. And more importantly, because of those big runs that we saw, the 70-yard run from Logan Wright early, the 75-yard run from LaRoche. And Georgia Southern rushing total tonight. 415 yards. Total offense, almost 500. A touchdown here would not get him to 500, but it would be close. They're at 475 right now. Another bad snap on third and four. King falls on it back at the 30. Really heads up play. And it's Tyler Bass time again. Another bad snap, the second one we saw here in the second half, but smart decision just to fall on it at the 30. We know Tyler Bass can kick the ball from just about anywhere on the field. I will tell you, Chad Lunsford is going to smile on the field at the end of this game because they managed to escape with a win. That locker room post game after he does the chair smash there's going to be some talking about fundamentals, I'll tell you that much. From 47, Bass just hooked it to the left. And that was a rare occurrence. Bass last year was 15 for 19 on field goals. It'll stay a 13-point lead with 7.04. Well, it turns out Tyler Bass is human. He misses a 46-yarder, and let's go down to Amy Zimmer. Georgia Southern came into this week with a chip on their shoulder. On Monday, head coach Chad Lunsford said last week didn't go as planned, and they did not play Eagle football. Coach Lunsford also assured that we would see a better football team this week, and we are seeing exactly that. Guys, back to you. Yeah, thanks, Amy. We're seeing a better football team. We are seeing a football team that still has a way to go before they play Minnesota next week. Yeah, and not to mention with the hurricane and classes getting canceled this week at Georgia Southern, the practice schedule got switched up a bit as well. They practiced Tuesday and Wednesday morning, did a walkthrough Thursday afternoon. And speaking with offensive coordinator Bob the Best, he said that Tuesday's practice was not good for the offense. He even had to yell at him a bit. And you don't usually see that from Bob the Best. Usually he's the good cop and the good cop, bad cop. <laughs> yeah. Very calm. All right, second and 10 after the incompletion. That's to Ernest Edwards. Holds on to it. Short gain. Bringing up third down and long with inside seven minutes to go. I'll tell you, Ernest Edwards, outside of that one big pass, has been pretty well contained tonight by the Southern secondary. Not to mention the catch he had, 53-yard catch. I mean, he's been targeted nine times so far in this game. He's only made three catches. All right, third down and six. Ferguson has been doing his darndest tonight to pick up first downs and move the chains, but Maine just three for 13 on third. And no surprise, they're going to want a timeout. First charge timeout. One thing we didn't Maine. really talk about. This will be a 30-second timeout. Go ahead. As Maine takes the first timeout of the second half, we didn't really talk about how the weather was going to be a factor for Maine. I mean, it, Playing up in the Northeast, you're playing in, in, in cool weather, 75, 80 degrees. It was 95 at game time here tonight. And you know what's funny you say that. First of all, thoughts and prayers to Amy Zimmer on the sideline. It felt like 105 <laughs> on the turf as this game was starting. More importantly, we talked to their sports information director and their radio broadcasters before this game, Danny. They did say it is so hot that by the second half, that's going to have an impact on Maine. And we've seen... 
Just need to take a toll on this offense so far in the second half. A couple of fumbles, unable to get to the end zone. It's like a trick play to get points on the board in the fourth quarter. All right, third down and six for the Black Bears. Ferguson with time and a man, and it's intercepted. It's Kendrick Duncan on his horse. And to the out of bounds. What a pick. It looked like he had a man streaking over the middle. But he stepped right in front of it. Yeah, he did, but Duncan came Offense, in. Number 62. Had two interceptions last season. Picks up his first. first Couple of penalties on the field, but that, those will be on main. And George is holding in a great spot. One more score here will seal the deal. More than likely will seal the deal. We're still six, they had a, six minutes to go. They had a chance to seal the deal when Tyler went out for that 46-47 yarder. Rare to see him miss a kick inside of like 53. But either way, this would certainly do it now that there's only six minutes left. And uh, no question, as good as Matt LaRoche has been, my player of the game vote tonight goes to Justin Tomlin. Was not officially announced that he would start in front of Shy Wirtz all week. It was a game time decision as he runs the option. He's going to go for the end zone, and he's down at the six. Justin Tomlin, redshirt freshman, really only the second game that he has seen any actual time in. He got garbage time minutes last year at Coastal Carolina. He looks great. I mean, there have been some uh, some struggles along the way, but your first start is never going to be perfect. So and especially not challenges. In, and it's such an intricate offense. Right. All right, second down and two. Tomlin hands it off to right. Spins down a tackle to the five-yard line. That'll bring up. Oh, it's like he might have picked up the first down. If he didn't, he's just a yard short. And they're going to give it to him by about a half yard. Should be first down and goal here from around the five-yard line. Your other uh, player of the game nominations, I've got Tomlin. I think the only other major option is probably LaRoche. I have to go with Tomlin. I have to agree with you. I mean, like we said, the first star is never going to be smooth sailing. He's been able to manage the game for the most part. A couple of bad snaps here and there. But the big plays have been keeping him in the game. Logan Wright goes shoulder first down to the three. And he got things started when he had that 45-yard touchdown run in the second quarter. Sure did. Once that happened, you saw the offense feel a little bit more relaxed out there on the field. I think that's probably because they saw him make a play that Shy Wirtz can make. Or something along those lines as Ray heads over to the sideline, down inside five minutes. Uh, one more touchdown would pretty much put this thing entirely in hand for Georgia Southern. On second and goal. Another bad snap. Looks like Southern might have gotten an arm on that one back at the 25. That is the third really bad high snap tonight. Yeah, I spoke too soon there. Another snap over and ahead of Tomlin. That's not Tomlin's fault either. No, th th this is the offensive line in the center all night. That's the third time, and part of that might be that it's different quarterbacks, but both Second Tomlin chance, and Wurtz are 5'11". They're the same size. Maybe. Right. This will be a 30-second timeout. Timeout was called. Maine called a timeout. What's well, going to bring up second down and goal from the 25-yard line? Well, like we said, Danny, next week does not get any, any easier for Georgia Southern when they go on the road. They'll play the Golden Gophers at Minnesota. Then they have a bye week. Next home game comes late in the month. And that is going to be Louisiana, the Ragin' Cajuns. They put up a heck of a fight against Mississippi State last week. Also projected to win the Western Division. 
Yeah, we talked about the storm before the calm. That's what Bob the Best said. Those first four games are going to be tough, and the Eagles may not find their identity until that South Alabama game. But once you get past Minnesota and you get to the bye week, you have a full week to prepare and get your mind right and ready for some belt competition. That's when it all matters the most. Long way to go. J.D. King down to the turf on third down. Gets it between the hashes and lines it up likely for Tyler Bass. Third and final timeout. Maine, timeout on the field. And before the field goal attempt, he'll take a timeout. We'll take it with them. Tyler Bass, next. Well, Tyler Bass was automatic pretty much all of last season, including in the moments it mattered most. Tonight he is three for four, hit from 37, 20, 31. He missed from 46 earlier in the quarter. This one is from 40 to make it 26 to 10. You got it, beautiful. 16 point lead for Southern. And Danny, they needed him tonight. He's made up a lion's share of their points. Well, we talked about Justin Tomlin being the MVP for this Eagle team, but you got to give credit to Tyler Bass. Four of five in field goals tonight. Keep in mind, out of those 26 points, only 14 came on offense for Georgia Southern. Tyler Bass did the rest. Came in clutch when the Eagles needed him the most. How is Chad Lunsford going to feel about this game? Well, for starters, he's going to be happy they got the win. Definitely. Uh, and I think you just have to take the bad with the good, go into the film, and get your team ready for Minnesota next week. Might want to have an extra talk with that offensive line in the center. And we don't know about Shy Wirtz, by the way. Yeah, we don't know. I would assume they would probably move into practice this week expecting him to play, but that's no guarantee. But either way, Tomlin certainly acquitted himself well and outperformed expectations tonight, I would say. And I think no matter what, whether Shy plays next week or not, what's important here is that Tomlin knows to be ready. I mean, it was different in the LSU opener when Shy went down and Tomlin had to get ready get ready quickly just to get into that game. And you don't know what he was feeling, the nerves that he probably had going through himself in that game. He prepared for this matchup against Maine and more than likely will prepare if needed against Minnesota next Saturday. All right, so let's see what Maine wants to pull out of the bag here with 345 to go in this one. And Georgia Southern, as of that last field goal with Tyler Bass, has this one in hand. That's a complete pass from Ferguson. He's been hitting those little dump offs all night yet again to Sean Bowman, the red shirt freshman tight end. So the question remains, Danny, are we going to see this dude next week in Minneapolis? We'll have to wait and see. I mean, it was day to day leading up to this game. It was a game time decision. More than likely will be day to day throughout next week as well. In the words of the great Keith Olbermann, <laughs> we're all day to day. <laughs> By the way, did you see Sports Center last night? He and Dan Patrick doing yes. Sports Center for the first time in 20 years. How great was that? That was iconic to, to see. I watched that entire show. I was like, a, Scott I was like as well. I was like a 10 year old kid again. I was so happy. Put that right in my veins. Third down, Ferguson. That's a complete pass across the 41 to Edwards. And this is going to be interesting to see from Maine here because they have no timeouts remaining. So they're going to be moving the ball as quick as possible here in these final three minutes if they want to try and put points on the board. Well, Maine just running a two-minute drill for experience's sake at this point overshot young he's the only one who hauled in a touchdown pass from this vaunted main offense tonight and mostly has been held quiet because of guys like Monquavian Brinson Kendall Bildor as well Ferguson now 20 of 43 
No touchdowns, one interception so far tonight. Yeah, 250 passing yards for the main quarterback. But what matters, like all of last season for Scott Sloan and the Southern defense, bend, don't break. They bend, they don't break, hauled in by Bowman, but shy of the sticks. And this is one thing that the Eagle defense did better here against Maine compared to LSU last week, because Scott Sloan said last week against LSU it was hard to win those one-on-one -on -one matchups, and they did a better job here tonight containing these main wide receivers. And they said leading into this game, they had to understand the schemes of Chris Ferguson in order to beat them. Third down and six. They like going to Bowman. They've been going to him a lot more tonight than they did last week against Secret Heart. I think moving forward, we're going to see this kid play for Maine a lot. Well, an interesting question for Maine following this game is going to be how do they prepare for Townsend next week? Because they, be they begin CAA conference play, and Townsend is one of the top teams to potentially win the conference, and they have a great quarterback in Tom Flacco. That name sounds familiar. Very familiar. Especially for somewhere near Baltimore. Fourth down and six, they're gonna go for it. Ferguson, pressure. Complete pass, Rashad Bird on the tackle. Hold in by Bowman, that'll move the chains. We do want to shout out Rashad Bird for the week he had last week at LSU. Oh yeah, I mean, while it was a tough game for the Eagles on defense, Rashad Bird had an incredible night out. 16 tackles, three and a half tackles for loss against LSU. That one's hauled in by Blair. Still on his feet and into the end zone. Well, Maine might not be quite in the coffin yet with 2.19 to go. That is their second passing touchdown of the night, but just the first from Ferguson. Well, they got to go for two here if they want to keep themselves in this game. You go for two, complete a two-point conversion, then possibly go for an onside kick and try to get the ball back. You bet you would go for the onside kick. And then it's too many drill from here on out. They do recover. You got to get it down to eight. So Maine will go for two. And I'll tell you, they get this ball from just inside the five. Their five-yard completion percentage tonight has been phenomenal. Timeout. No, no timeout. No Delay timeout. a game. Delay a game. Delay a game. Couldn't get the ball off the time. Number 14. Five-yard penalty. Couldn't get the play call in in time. So that'll make one. the two-point conversions a little bit harder. All of a sudden, this gets awfully interesting, and if Maine converts and they bring out the onside kick unit, which they will, you have to wonder, if you're Georgia Southern, aren't there any of those field goal drives that we could have hit touchdowns on to put this thing away? Or are there any of those drives where a turnover costs them a touchdown? All right. Take this thing from just inside the 10. Empty set for Ferguson. Looking left. He'll throw left. Blair on the ground. Did he catch that? He got it. That's a good two-point conversion for Maine. Blair hauls in the touchdown and then the two-point conversion on the fingertips. Wow. Tipped it up. Wow. Tip drill. And then made the catch. All right. Jaquan well. Blair. What an eventful fourth quarter for that guy. He's been great tonight, by the way. Leading receiver, put him over 80 yards, and now a touchdown and a two-point conversion. This game's not quite over. No, it's not dead yet. Here's the thing for Maine, though, that's absolutely the punch in the gut. They have to onside kick because they don't have any timeouts left. They burned all three. Right, so all the Eagles need to do is just grab it, cover, and then run the clock out. All right, well, we've had gigantic swings in feeling inside this stadium, Danny. People are sitting on their hands now. They know that if Maine gets the ball back with 219, that is plenty of time for Chris Ferguson. And more momentum towards the Black Bears if they do get the possession. Well, you've got to imagine this is going to be an onside kick. Like we said, no timeouts left for Maine.
This is Doak. High bounce. That one did bounce out of bounds. I'm not even sure that got 10 yards. Yeah, I, I don't think it, it. I don't think it did get 10 yards. It'll be a flag. Legal kick out of bounds. Key team. Five yards will be added to the spot where the ball went out of bounds. First down. And I don't know about you, Greg, but even though the Eagles have the ball, I'm still not convinced. One thing I, I want to see them do here in these final two minutes, hike the ball under the quarterback. Don't go shotgun. Because we've seen a bunch of bad snaps so far. Oops. Here goes Tomlin ahead of the gun. They just don't want to risk it. This is not quite in Tyler Bass's range yet. Logan right down. And that might be Tyler Bass's range. Well, if you get a first down, you don't have to even go for the field goal. That's exactly right. Clock Clock's on your side. You have... Maine has no timeouts. Nothing to do. Second down, eight yards to go from the 34-yard line. So even if Maine does get this ball back, they're not going to have very much time regardless. We're in a Hail Mary situation here. Yeah, but do you trust that with... Blair going downfield and Ferguson to throw it to him plus Ernest Edwards. Southern wants a first down here. Second and eight. J.D. King behind his blockers. Tries to fall forward. Not going to get it. This will be third down and it's going to take us down inside 90 seconds. Let us not forget though this would be a makeable kick for Tyler Bass. He did miss one tonight from 46. So he's not been perfect tonight, and he was almost automatic, especially here last year. Yeah, last season, he was 19 for 21. This is third down and six. Southern's going to run the ball. They're just going to try to, I would imagine, run a spacing play here, or maybe just keep it in between the hash marks for Tyler. Two distinct schools of thought. On third and six, right to the outside. Go, 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 go. To forward. This is going to be close. I think he got it by maybe a half yard, but here's a flag too. And that's going to stop the clock, by the way, 41 seconds. Holding offense, number 71. 10-yard penalty, makes third down. Maine has elected to begin the play on the snap. That was on Peyton Backer right there. And I'll tell you, if Southern is lucky enough to walk out of this game with a win, uh, there's going to be a lot of talk about fundamentals this week in practice because a couple of bounces, a couple of non-recovered fumbles, Southern second might have lost this out. game. Georgia Southern. This will be a 30-second timeout. And Danny, especially considering this Georgia Southern team led college football in turnover margin last year. They didn't turn it over in 2018. Yeah, not a, rarely throughout that season, but we've seen the complete opposite here tonight. A bunch of missed snaps, a couple of fumbles here and there. I mean, overall, there were seven fumbles on Georgia Southern's side. I would have to imagine that includes the bad snaps, of which there were three or four, yes? Yeah. Okay. Now, luckily, they've recovered six of them. Yeah, and you cannot expect that once you get into the... And this is no slight on Maine. That's not going to happen against App State and Arkansas State. That's not going to happen. You're not going to get that lucky. Well, they'll have two weeks to repair before their first Sun Belt Conference matchup back here on the 28th of September against Louisiana. Well, third and 16... Tomlin to right to the outside. Down he goes. Defensive line there to meet him. That'll bring up fourth down. As a matter of fact, Greg, I don't think the Eagles need to do anything else. We're Less looking than 30 at 30 seconds to go. We're looking at the clock versus the play clock. This actually might be all they need. That might have been it. 
All right, well, Georgia Southern lucky to be alive and walk away from this game with a win over Maine. There's always some concern when Georgia Southern in their first week go up against a Power 5 conference team to start the season, but they have bounced back on multiple occasions. 2015 opened up against West Virginia, lost that game, but bounced back against Central Michigan. 2014 lost to NC State, bounced back against Savannah State. They had the loss in 2017 in New Hampshire, but in 2019, a loss to LSU, no fret, able to defeat Maine, final score, 26-18. Well, if you are Nick Charlton in Maine, you are proud. If you are Chad Lunsford in Georgia Southern, you are relieved. But you're worried about the next two weeks. And yeah, now you have to regroup and prepare yourself for Minnesota. No kidding. So that was a fun one tonight, although a little nerve-wracking if you're a Georgia Southern fan moving forward. The final score tonight, Georgia Southern 26, Maine 18. And after getting thrashed 55-3 to last week, in Baton Rouge, Georgia Southern picks up their first win of the 2019 regular season. So for Danny Waugh and Amy Zimmer, I'm Greg Talbot saying so long from Paulson, where the Eagles win 26-18. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a proud presentation of ESPN.